beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed in my life lord i see what you're doing one more time i truly lift my hands in praise of your name i lift my hands in praise of your name Let's just sing it one more time. I praise you. I praise you. Mean this song from the depth of your heart. Oh Lord, I praise you for your authority, for your grace upon our lives. In my life, I see what you're doing one more time of your name hallelujah we'll get to the word but let me just speak to one or two people silas I'm hearing the name Silas. Who is Silas? Silas. The Lord is speaking to me about someone called Silas. The Lord wants to bring a miracle for the family of one Silas. Please, if you're here inside, outside, just notify so I will speak to you. I'm hearing a name Joyce. Is it Joyce or something? Joyce, like J O Y C E. Is there someone with that name? Joyce. Joyce. Please, if that belongs to you, very quickly, so that I can just speak the word that the Lord is putting. Hallelujah. I'm hearing a lady, they call you Gimbia, whatever that means. They call you Gimbia. Gimbia, who is that? Inside, outside. Please, very quickly, if there's someone like that with that case or someone related to you, let me just speak over your life. about them please don't just come out let's save time we have a lot they call you that name 
who has a sick patient in the hospital i'm seeing somebody having a sick patient you came here you left a sick patient in the hospital this is a very serious case this is i'm seeing the person just bones um this is like a lady a lady why is he out you're the one with a sick person where what's wrong the person I'm seeing is a blood disease I'll pray for you but this is a blood disease something that's eating the person is lying down in fact they are praying technically just for the person to die it's very quickly let's just minister to them this is what the meetings are all about it's an opportunity for God to step in and bless me you know only the church is authorized to do this any other person who does this is illegal only the church if a herbalist does this is still illegal the politician does this is illegal only the church is authorized there are not many places that are permitted by God to do these kinds of things so we must take advantage of it what's wrong patient where What's wrong with you? He's permitting blood from his nose and his mouth and his legs has swell up. They told you something. A man of God told the family something. What did he say? That somebody charmed him from the village. Do you think it's a lie? Is he your brother? Your friend? What do you mean friend somebody you want to marry you are now saying is your friend as if am i lying no sir shabi is your girl now <laughs> hallelujah let's look listen listen let's take this in easy this night i have some serious it's too early to start laughing the message tonight is very serious hallelujah you believe god can heal him right you're a very nice lady hold my hands may god how many ladies who meet somebody that they like and the person is in the hospital they will just leave him first and start arranging for the absence so for her to be able to come out and stand in for him you believe god will heal him what's his name father please do a miracle for this gentleman I use you as a point of contact. May the anointing of the Spirit touch him. And that chain of witchcraft be broken. Anything he eats, he vomits it out. We have to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I use you as a point of contact. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, my dear. God is bringing a breakthrough for your family, right? Tonight is not a miracle service, but let me just minister your joys. God is bringing a miracle to your family. And um, I'm seeing you walking, but then I'm seeing like a vehicle just takes you to rush. That speed God is bringing to your life. Father, I pray that this will be, even as you have declared in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I really don't know why. Okay, come. The person with accident, his leg broke. What happened? He she okay do you know why what did they say is wrong with her my dear me I'm, I was I dear her leg broke that's why they said she would stay in the hospital for three months 90 this is what I'm telling you. You are saying trailer fell. will trailer fall on you and it will not enjoy you. This is a miracle she needs because they are going to there are multiple fractures that happen to her. Father, do a miracle and let her get out of that hospital in the name of Jesus. And for you, may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why is he out? Your name is Joyce. Your ah okay. 
let me just pray. Honestly, let's, let's just pray for her. At least you don't come out and get nothing. Father, bless Joyce in the name of Jesus. Sir, you are suffering financially very seriously. You are suffering financially, one. But the second thing is not something I can say here because it will embarrass you. But please, you love Jesus. You, you talk, please. It's not something I'll say here. But it must stop in Jesus' name. You know what I'm saying. It must stop. I don't want to embarrass you, sir. But please, if I make the altar call, just come out and go out. God bless you, sir. Thank you. I'll pray for you. I'll just lay my hands quickly so we can do tonight's teaching. Gimbia. Who is from Kaduna? What's your name? So why are you here? The Lord wants to bring deliverance to a family. Please, just, just let me just do this. I didn't intend doing this. I'm seeing a family, four of them in the family are SS. Four of them. SS. Four of them. The person is somewhere, I don't know if it's inside or outside. Four of them. SS, like genotype. Genotype. And the Lord wants to do a miracle right now. Please, don't sit back there. God wants to do a miracle. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. A miracle for you. God is bringing restoration to you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Please go back. Are you brothers? Where are the other ones? They are not here. Four of you. How many of you are SS? Four. You believe God will do a miracle? Do you believe it? The anointing of the Spirit of God is already on you because you have faith to receive. The power of God is already on you. Breaking Something is leaving you. You must let her go. I tell you, there's, there's no such thing as SS. Believe me. It's a lie. See, that a doctor said it. I'm not against doctors. They are practicing. They are practicing. Practicing. When we say you are practicing, what does that mean? That means you don't have all the answers. They are practicing. There's no such thing as SS. If you are not whole, there is a spirit making it so. If you sit down just saying, I'm okay. No! Machine called this SS. You are watching it right before you. This is witchcraft. There's no such thing. I don't believe it. We have doctors, see doctors all around, but I don't believe it. Just believe me. You must, you don't fight people, but you must contend for a higher spiritual reality. That's the only way you can dominate the limitations of this realm. I say it again. There is no such thing as SS. And I minister right now. I stretch my hands. Anyone here with any blood disease, please pay attention to what I'm saying. Anyone here under the sound of my voice with any blood disease, whether you are aware or not, right now in the name of Jesus, I arrest that spirit wherever it is. I'm not asking you to come out. Wherever you are, in the name that is above all names, I arrest that spirit wherever it is. There are at least three people with this blood disease. It's like a curse in your family. Wherever they are, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I arrest that spirit. We call it in medicine, SS or AS or whatever it is. But we are changing it right now. We are changing it right now by the influence of the Spirit of God inside and outside. Anyone who is a victim of that kind of thing, let it be changed right now. Father, hold my hands. I bring you healing in the name of Jesus right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be healed of that demonic thing in the name of Jesus, I use both of you as a point of contact to your families. Hallelujah. Goodness, I have to preach. Bring the lady that shouts under the anointing outside. 
I'm seeing an angel of the Lord touching a lady outside. A mighty shout. Please bring her inside right now. I want to talk to her. Break every chain. 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 There is power. There is power. In you. There is power. In you. The Lord has been doing a great work in your life. But one of the things that the Lord is doing in this season is He's cutting away altars. This is what is happening in your life and in your family. He's breaking them up. Your coming to Koinonia is causing a serious catastrophe in the gates of hell concerning your family. And I pray for you, God will begin to give you dreams, all kinds of strange dreams, encounters with angels, supernatural encounters, encounters in the spirit. I agree with you and I take authority over everything that does not name the name of Christ. Let it live your life and let it go forever in the name of Jesus. Listen, let me tell you something. Whether a service is a miracle service or not, it doesn't matter as far as God is concerned. For as long as there is something in your life that stops you from enjoying the blessings of the kingdom, it must come under attack. Are we together now? We can't say wait until i know that i have a teaching session but you see let me tell you something it is our desire that every time you come here you have an encounter with god hallelujah i'm seeing like a bird jumping out of people this is strange just allow me to do my madness for a few minutes this is like a spirit leaving people from their stomach just flying out i'm seeing at least five people that this is happening to severely right now at least five people five people that this is happening to five people something just jumping out like a bird that's what i'm seeing in the spirit let it go let it go in the name that is above all names let it go right now like a bird is leaving causing pain and destruction I command it to leave right now in the name of Jesus Christ for one that's what has been causing an infection I see like an infection but it goes right now by the power of the Holy Spirit it must leave your body forever Hallelujah Please sit down. Let's get to the business of the night. This atmosphere is already stirred. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1. Last week, we began looking at the subject of the unity of the faith. We began to explore the body of Christ, the ecclesia. And we started to examine why we've not been able to attain that position of unity in the body of Christ. Why divisions, why seditions and all kinds of things. And um, the Lord granted us the opportunity to look extensively. I first and foremost began last week by 
talking about the concept of divine patterns how that no man is at liberty to choose the method of his pursuit towards spiritual progress there's no such thing as guessing your way around there is a blueprint are we together now and then it's expected that everyone who aligns to god will follow his predefined blueprint that means there is a way to seek god such that you will find him there is a way to become a christian and to live out your christian experience so that it becomes fruitful anything outside that pathway will lead to error will lead to apostasy and will lead to a barren christian life and we began to examine the concept of divine patterns there is a way you build ministry you don't build it the way you want there is a pattern there is a way you build business you don't build it the way you want there is a way you build family and so the first assignment of every believer who wants to make progress in the spirit is not just to begin to move carelessly but through the illumination of the word of god to search out right the pathways in the spirit that have been earmarked for the delivery of certain kinds of spiritual results if you want the anointing in the spirit there is a pathway that leads to the anointing if you want increase in ministry there is a pathway if you want to walk in financial prosperity there is a pathway the problem with our generation is that we have we are so intellectual and scientific we guess our way around the things that only the word of god can give us information about jesus said i am the way not a way hallelujah the bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man scientifically intellectually he says but the end thereof are the ways of death so one of the things that staying under the presence of god does for a christian is that it helps you to cut away all these options you have and guides you to the path that path of righteousness right where you begin to live out in accordance you are no longer a rebel to the principles of the kingdom then you come at peace with creation and everything begins to um, compel on common consistent results in your life praise the Lord so we spoke about divine patterns and um, we rounded off last week discussing three great errors remember three great errors that have crippled the body of christ and um, has fought god's agenda of seeing the church coming to that point the bible calls the unity of faith error number one is apostasy a deviation from the patterns of god a deviation from the truth and i told you that there are two dimensions of apostasy the vessel communicating that apostasy that deviation that error can be false and of the devil never of god in the first place or the individual can be of god but his doctrine is not of god are we together now the bible talked about a man in the bible called demas demas was once in the faith but he fell out of the faith and began to communicate things that were not of god balaam the bible warns in the book of revelation of the doctrine of balaam Balaam was a true prophet right but then there was a progression it was first an error of Balaam then it was a way of Balaam then it was a doctrine of Balaam it started as a mistake then it became a pathway to guide others to follow and then it became a doctrine the Bible talks about the doctrine of the Nicolaitans which I hate all of these are fabrications from the pit of hell many of them uh they were initiated by sincere people with sincere desires but because they guessed their own pathway see the danger when sincerity mixes with error it becomes apostasy because you have passion but your pathway is wrong are we together so someone wants to see breakthrough in their family sincere heart then they go to a herbalist a wrong pathway and then it produces a deviation from God's pattern with severe consequences. So the first error is the error of apostasy. There are many doctrines being taught in church. Many of them have been older than every one of us here. But the foundation of those doctrines 
are from the pit of hell the bible says doctrines of demons doctrines of demons people have gone for prayer and fasting gone to several places and not navigating the pathway of the spirit properly they have accessed strange ideas from spirits that a thing is supernatural does not mean it's of god supernatural just means outside of the three-dimensional realm there are spheres that influence us beyond the scope of the three-dimensional realm and chances are that anything you see that is superhuman you suddenly call it godly it may be divine in that it is of a force that is greater than that of humans is supernatural being that is outside of the scope of man's reason but that does not mean it is of god the apostle said there is as it were many voices and none of them is without effect so that you are having encounters that are extra physical or beyond the physical realm does not mean these encounters are of god apostasy number two indifference that was the second error we considered how that there are people in the body of christ whose scope of passion is not kingdom the scope of their passion is not um is not holistic once an error in the body of christ does not affect their immediate environment they are not concerned are we together now is 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 the error of indifference so they are so conscious of their ego they do not have the courage to confront certain things that have the capacity to destroy the body for as long as it has not affected them in person they are the kinds who will give an a, a testimony like praise the lord i was coming in a car with 30 people and there was an accident but only because i hold papa's biro every other person died only me the god of a and b and c and people clap about it not minding that other believers died which has impeded the capacity for kingdom acceleration so the the scope of their pursuit of god is biased self-centered once a thing does not affect them directly that was the attitude of esther when she got to the throne as against that of mordecai mordecai was a gatekeeper with a passion for the salvation of israel are we together now and god took esther hadassah to the throne the purpose was so that she would be a source of influence to rebuke that which haman was plotting against the nation of israel but when she got there she became carried away by the bounties of royalty and then haman was there plotting the destruction of the nation of israel and mordecai sent her a message and for a while she would not pay attention and this is what mordecai said don't you think number one they don't even know you are a jew hanging in that palace because when they know they will hang you and kill you in a shameful way a woman gave chance for you to come here called vashti and now god brought you there and you have lost that kingdom view of your purpose of being in the palace so because you are now enjoying the royalties of the palace you do not care if your people die listen if you want to become an effective christian an effective minister your scope must expand beyond the horizon of your ministry and koinonia to think kingdom you must sustain an ability to receive the burden of the corporate church and not just your individual sphere now for the purpose of organization and loyalty you'll be loyal to whatever god has committed the ministry whatever it is he has given you however your concern must transcend your personal comfort into seeing that the body of christ is making progress no matter how koinonia is advancing as a ministry if the body of christ in zaria if the body of christ in the north is not making progress if the body of christ in nigeria is not making progress we are not making the kind of kingdom impact god desires are we together as a ministry we may be doing well this is the reason why we travel from region to region spending our lives stretching ourselves we're doing well as a ministry but how about the body of christ that they too may know him so we go to other regions and inconvenience ourselves 
to make sure that we open them up to the perspectives of God that has been communicated to us and contribute our quota to strengthening the body of Christ within that territory. Hallelujah. Are we together now? And this is one of the, the, the proofs of a true apostolic ministry. The scope of the impact of an apostolic ministry is beyond the platform that is committed to them. They, they oversee the spiritual progress of a territory, not just a ministry. Hallelujah. So if there is a spirit that the devil is bringing over our territory to cause the church to be lukewarm or to begin to cause a particular trait and a manifestation of darkness, it is the role of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry to see beyond, even if it has not affected koinonia yet, we see it and stay it far off and keep the environment conducive for the advancement of the kingdom to take place. Indifference. There are so many people who will never come out. You ask them, um, what is your position on tithing, for instance? And um, because they are in the presence of somebody who does not believe in tithing, they will not want to spoil that relationship by saying tithing is of God. But then they, they have their convictions, but to be outspoken about the truth they do not want it because they are afraid of losing members are we together they are afraid of losing all kinds of things a man comes to sow one billion into your ministry and you know it's drug money but then because you need the money you would compromise on that chance to show how addicted you are to the precepts of the kingdom are we together now and you collect the drug money and not have the courage to confront him and say no 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 we need money in this ministry but this is we are not this desperate it must be according to the patterns of god and then the last error that has destroyed the body of christ is exaggerated confrontation of apostasy you see the balance now so the first error is apostasy a deviation from the truth the second error is indifference we don't know where you are standing neither here nor there men with no convictions they are not outspoken about anything they are confident about and then number three are those who are cynical and they hate the body of christ they have contributed to causing more pain in the body than victory exaggerated confrontation they are already people who are sadist they have a negative perception about the body are we together now and so anything that happens in the body they interpret it from the lens of jealousy and envy so even when they are communicating what is supposed to be true the foundation upon which that communication is predicated upon is wrong self-centered and biased so for instance if they are trying to say something like um we caught maman with a charm as a man of God, we caught him in the meeting. I saw him rubbing one powder quickly. They take on that case study because they have a bias for the supernatural by default. Are we together now? It's just that they do not have enough fact and figures to convince people to leave the supernatural. So when they lay hold on something, they capitalize on that one exceptional case and it becomes a foundation of their proposing what is supposed to be a corrective measure but it's a communication of error are we together someone can watch what just happened here now this manifestation of the anointing and be uncomfortable with it are we together now and then go to a church where he sees a man of god holding somebody's head and turning the head around and use that singular case to mean anytime you are ministering to people under the anointing is an error no sir you see true correction must come from a standpoint of love anything outside of the scope of love is jealousy is bitter envy are we together so those who help in deviating the body of christ from the precepts of god those who are indifferent about it because of their self-centeredness and then those who in a bid to supposedly bring correction let me tell you something please look up i say this with every sense of humility not every man of god is authorized to correct the body of christ 
read your Bible. You don't just stand up and think because you have something to say. There is, there is a throne. There is an authorization like a spiritual pass that is given unto people by election of grace that authorizes them to be able to define the boundaries of the spiritual operation of the body of Christ. It's not just because you have a mic and you have people listening to you. You come and stand with all kinds of misguided perspectives and now begin to communicate truths that are limited by your own spiritual perception. Hallelujah. So let's take it from there. And um, we'll touch on a few things and pray. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1. Amen and amen and amen. Are you blessed? Verse 12. We'll read from 12 to 15. Revelation chapter 1, 12 to 15. There are a few thoughts, maybe about four of them, I will share with you on the body of Christ. And then we will pray. Okay. And I turned to see the voice. This is John the beloved when he was caught in the Isle of Patmos. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw what? Seven golden candlesticks or lampstands. Next verse. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the paths with a golden girdle. Let's just stop there, really. The remaining is just a description. Listen. Where was the Son of Man found? In the midst of the seven lampstands. And those seven lampstands, John himself interpreted it that the seven lampstands represent the Catholic Church. Not Roman Catholic. The word Catholic means the universal church, the ecclesia. Are we together now? God's body, the very body of Christ. This is a powerful revelation because regardless, please listen, regardless of the error and the confusion, and now I know that there's a lot of that, regardless of the scandals that break out here and there in church among men of God, regardless of the divinations and the mix of witchcraft and the prophetic, God is still in the church. When you want to find where God is on earth, the Bible says he was found in the midst of the seven candlesticks you will never come to a point where you will not find god in the church this is a revelation that will help you to tread spiritual pathways listen in every assembly i don't care whether the man is a herbalist or a devil if there is one person who genuinely believes in the hand of god for the sake of that one person god will find a way of manifesting himself in the church whether or not he is received are we together now please listen do not carry this idea that god is is just in some places and not in some places no the bible says in the midst of the seven lampstands are we together you must have this understanding about the body of christ so that when you go for a conference and you watch the people playing games and the people trying to get money out of people as angry as you are there is a consolation he is still in the midst of the seven lampstands so you take your eyes away from all the error and the jamborees and you pay attention if you pay attention you will find god this is already a deliverance for someone because if you are looking for a perfect church you will not find one you will find a man of God who is warded but lousy. While you are angry with that one, you'll find the one that loves God but once in a while he touches beer when there's pressure. Are we together? And then while you are running, you find another one. Brothers and sisters, in the midst of the confusion of the church, Christ is still in the church. So you have your, your predefined, you have your idea about how service should be run. Koinonia is quite organized. If during praise and worship you decide to just fly over here, the protocol will carry you and take you out. We are a bit organized, but there's a church you go to that somebody can even be dancing and come and jump and the man of God will hold him and jump back and you now roll and enjoy. You will go to that kind of church with your cynicism 
because you want everywhere to be like koinonia and then you do not have the flexibility to understand that god is not in the church because it is perfect god is in the church because he is the one perfecting it believe this and you will have a very very open spirit about the body of christ there is no way i cannot preach there is no way i can if tell me um call well I, I i don't mention names of men of god but please permit me to just call one call uh, gurma that guy lagos about an expert gurma raji right if gurma raji invites me for dinner i will go i won't do it in a secret i will do it in the open you will snap me and it will be on facebook i will go and eat with you the person who cut the meat you bought from the market today is doing worse things than gurma raji what they did with that cow before you ate it but just because you didn't see it you now bought the meat you didn't pray over it you boiled the thing and ate it well, you see this hypocrisy and lies in the church is why we don't find god listen there is no man who is influenced outside of his will being in the presence of evil is not what corrupts people opening up to the influence of evil is what corrupts a man this is not a justification to be unruly with your spirit but you must be conscious of what is within you above and beyond what is around you let me tell you christ is in his body don't think one man's anger about what the church is doing so the, the argument that oh there are people who wear trousers and god is not in this church there are people who veil their hairs and don't believe in wearing trousers they are people of the law god is not in this church these ones are grace people god is there these ones are law people god these ones are old testament christ is everywhere trust me trust me i've gone to too many places and i have wondered and marveled at the presence of god that came there so when i go for a meeting I expect imperfection from the vessels so it doesn't surprise me are we together now I went for a meeting one day and the man of God was preaching and they were clapping and he was carried away and he did something that Kai a Christian should not do you know we men of God once you are carried away especially when you joke and people clap it now you, you now digress and start saying things that don't make sense and he did something that was not nice I said well god this is your church you are still in your holy temple we fear you but just have mercy on us and my ears was open and i was blessed i was blessed so if you go and sit down in a church where they say everybody fetch sand for instance it was, ah, what am i doing here no let me tell you you can ignore the sand part and pay attention even if you don't learn any spiritual lesson you can learn diligence even if you don't learn anything you can learn excellence if the message is not blessing you at all look at the backdrop all right this is a new color i've not said there's something to learn because whatever it is christ is in his church listen to what i'm telling you and you will be so mature you will marvel and wonder at your level of spiritual maturity god's idea is not to make the whole world koinonia that's that's a dream if that's what you think we are doing well i'm not one of those men of god who believes that will convert the whole world to become our church it's a dream that god will stop by himself because that's not his idea i think kingdom so regardless of my personal contribution i am also um of the proposition that the church as a universal entity will make progress even if it is not my unique so if somebody is healed whether the person was healed from mfm or living faith it doesn't matter the most important thing is an avenue has been created for the power of god to find expression are we together now god is still in the midst of his church please listen brothers and sisters god does not use us because we are perfect people no self-perfection is, is exhausting and unnecessary Number two, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16, verse 8. There are certain things that I want to straighten out tonight about the body of Christ so that our approach over the body of Christ will be very balanced because many men of God do not have the courage to teach this. 
because of their bias they run churches like their personal organization matthew 16 verse 18 is the second point that i want to communicate it says and i say unto thee listen thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church everybody say god will build his church so who is the builder of the church god never left the building of the church to joshua selman or any other person he himself is the builder of the church imagine if god left the building of the church to me i will first gather all the people who are my tribe is that not what we do are you my tribe no you are not part of this building and we make it look like association of christian members of of northern i will build my church and if you allow me build it the gate of hell that means if the gate of hell is prevailing over your church you are building it because god said i will build it in such a way that it will be so fortified that the gates of hell will not prevail please listen i want you once and for all especially for those who are pastors or those who are trusting god for ministry bury this ownership mentality about ministry this is why pastors fight do you fight what is not your own if i want to touch a jimmy's child now is his child are we together now and so he will stand and defend it if i'm touching this flower you may feel bad but it's not your own personally so you have no right to challenge me the decorations department can be angry but at least not you so why do i become so personal if somebody says i don't like koinonia you take it personal because you are the geo you are the builder you will, you will pay for the bills you will manage all the crises there and you will run yourself to an early grave i learned this early in life god if you don't build your church let's be embarrassed together i am just a pipe the way you see let me tell you this is the reason why there is so much refusal to confront truth in the body of christ even when the truth has been known because everybody is conscious of his own church so we run we run ministries like business ventures i have two thousand members in my ministry and my church these are my sons these are my daughters they are everybody's at my beck and call and then you now try to spiritualize it by saying god is helping us ownership mentality as a leader you should be responsible over that which god has given to you but you see we are stewards in the kingdom if men of god knew that they are stewards they would not kill themselves i see the way a lot of pastors yeah i mean you see somebody he didn't come to church you almost kill him i didn't see you in church why to mean you reduce the number it's because of you they 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 thought we are, they, they have been writing that we are 50. Now you are the one who is making them think we are 48. You see, that kind of mindset. Listen, listen, I'm speaking to you. If you don't relinquish the, the pressure that ownership brings, it will kill you early. That's why people fight. Hallelujah. That's why people fight. If you ever want to see expansion in anything and in ministry, you must surrender everything thing to god you see the way we do koinonia the, the workers are aware god forbid but if i die today you only cry for seven days today's what friday i assure you by tuesday or wednesday you'll be used to it ah Posu is dead i'm dead how i mean what happened this guy even released long life what, what you are saying is irrelevant because i'm gone they will bury me take me my mother will cry all the people they will cry and everybody will be fine when they dump me. that's all i tell you and by next week koinonia continues the only thing you will miss in this ministry is my unique grace i preach enough messages to bless the body of christ but there are pastors the day they miss service everybody will know this service was a mess where are you pastor where are you listen never have that kind of attitude over the body of christ the best of any member is only an effective member no one person equals the church 
the, the, the recognition of this is equal to wisdom. Are we together? I learned this early. And so I let him take the glory. He's the one building Koinonia. And for as long as I allow him to keep building it, that's the reason why we do ministry pressure free. There's no frowning at everybody, frowning at the offering. Once they are dropping, you are now looking. You see five naira in the transparent side of the basket, you are angry. Five naira, how much is generator? How much is this? If you, if you want to fund ministry by yourself and be responsible, oh no, 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 no. Get set to kill yourself. I'm too young. I plan to live very long. Forget this story about death, I told you. I have the, I have the confidence to say it because I plan to live long. The mysteries of life that surround me are more than any devil bomb blast accident etc that's why i can talk about it i scare death to his face and go to bed because death is a spirit it's not one of those touch not no 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 come on ask it the sun will no more give me sunlight by day the moon will no more give me moonlight by night Jehovah will be my everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength, and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh finds up the wounds of this world, He heals all the bruises in listen god is the builder of the church and like every member in the body or the corporate body you can allow god to build your life because your own body not koinonia my body is the temple of the holy spirit so i allow him to build me into prosperity i allow him to build me into health i allow him to build me into increase I allow him by aligning to him. Every other thing is a work of grace. My own part is alignment through obedience. Are we together? Listen, I'm speaking to someone tonight. Come on to me, Jesus says. All ye that are labor and are heavy laden, you are putting upon yourself self-inflicted frustration. There are pastors who before a service starts, they will call the department. How many people are there now? Say, Kite. The way it is, it's like 80, 81. <sighs> I was 81. Today that is a convention. Depression for no reason. And I will build my church. Papa Oyedeko was sharing how that when they were dedicating Covenant University, the Lord asked him to lie down flat on the ground in front of the gate are we together now different men of god have their different skills of surrender papa Ia deboy will kneel down once he just goes on stage he will kneel down before everybody which is uh, what they call that thing tambourine say look don't be carried away that i'm among the world's hundred most influential people i can sing and dance before god other people roll on the ground before god all that they are doing is saying lord let the people see that it is the finger of god not the brain of a man your brain is too small to run ministry ministry pressure will blow it into pieces hand it over to the all wise god listen every time you see supernatural things in the church don't fight it it is the finger of god because most times the reason why we doubt the fact that it is God is we look at the individuals that God is using. The protocol people are here and they will tell you most times when we travel for ministration, most people, did you know that over 70% of the people who have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me. They don't even know how I look. And I love it, you cannot imagine. We are dropping from the airport and then we come out and then they are looking. They greet Victor, how are you? They greet Mike, and then they look at Yerima. Oh, Yerima is quiet. He looks like he's the one. And then I'm there with polos and my earphone, and I'm just moving. And then I say, how are you? And I can see the disappointment. We labor to borrow Jeep. 
we labor to do all of these things to carry this thing but there is this treasure in earthen vessels listen when you know this no matter how high any result you see is you will not be afraid of it because you can see where the man's limitation stopped you know from here it's no longer joshua selman this is the hand of god jesus said if i by the finger of god cast out these demons the kingdom has come to you same thing with honor we're talking with um while the protocol person was driving me eddie was driving me coming we're discussing with him in the car and then i was telling him i said can you imagine how uh what was i even talking about i was talking about honor how people crave for honor in the body of christ once somebody is entering, when I was coming, I saw the media people chasing me with camera, just snapping. And I said, this, these are the things that kill men of God. You snap your way into death. Unnecessary honor. Let me tell you something. I have found out by experience that honor is a mantle. If God has not given you, there is nothing that will bring it to your life. What someone did that brought honor, you would do it. And they will trivialize it but when that grace comes no matter what you do and jabez was more honorable which service did he conduct it was an anointing hallelujah and i will build my church i learned this principle of absolute surrender long ago in my life and it's one of the foundational things that's why when men of god stand and they are bragging I this and that my shoe is 50,000 this suit came from this and I said Lord I know how the suit came it came through favor favor I'm unashamed of the favor of God oh you were smart fine you qualified after 20 years of ministry to be sitting in this position I was carried on the wings of grace I know how I got there and so I don't become foolish he is the builder and so I give him all the glory. I will not say, Lord, you are the builder. Then when it's time for shine, I say, God, this is my moment. Just allow me to serve it. No. To you be all the glory. The reason why we don't give God glory in church is because we do not recognize that he is the builder. The leaders know. Everybody knows. I tell you. That anybody climbs this pulpit one day to brag and make noise as though it's his strength. I, I don't know what will happen to that person. Maybe thunder will just strike on his head and drop him dead there. Koinonia is a mystery held only by the hand of God. Only by the hand of God and not the wisdom of a man. He said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, no man, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Is God with you? And are you allowing him to build your life? Are we together? Say after me, God is building the church. That's why, let me say something. Except for very, very, um, for few exemptions, the idea of people running away from their church because they feel it's not hot enough, is not correctly kingdom because God is building his church as lukewarm as that church is one day the fire of god will fall on one quiet youth who is around one at the back of one toilet praying for three hours every day he will just pray and go back and say lord this boredom in this church i am taking the burden every day he's just praying in tongues three hours one day he will have an encounter that's what happened to apostle babalola right quietly he went to tap uh, um i don't know if it was palm wine or something I, I can't remember the story now and the fire of God fell upon him. He saw a whirlwind like that of Moses. And a voice spoke from it. He had an encounter. And then there were already a group of prophets. Who refused to endorse him in the ministry. And one day they were watching him from the window during a prayer session. And the guy healed a madman. In their presence and the Lord told them this guy. Is one of the people to carry that apostolic grace. That was the only condition. That they received him and extended a hand of fellowship for him. Brothers and sisters, please let God build your life. All this bragging, I'm beautiful, that's why it's working. You will see the limitation of beauty 
when it is only beauty building your life i'm rich that's why i i i got first class that's why remember last was it last month or month before last when we prayed for a first class student here who was jobless how do you explain that please make up your mind for the body of christ and for yourself that from today you will never be embarrassed to directly acknowledge god in all your ways i'm sharing with you a principle that will bless you in all your ways acknowledge him right proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 6 to 7 really that's verse 6 in all your ways acknowledge him and there is a promise he will direct make straight your path my ministry my business my intelligence many guys are around me even them they know that i'm fine continue instead of you to use the opportunity and say lord thank you there are many ladies nobody will even say good morning to see let me tell you men can deceive you but when you deceive yourself you are really in deception everybody here we know where god brought us from everybody knows i know where god brought me from so i'm not going to allow all of the blessings from ministry get me carried away some of us will not acknowledge it by ourselves but if others try to do it in a way you know is destructive you will enjoy it it's like saying i won't buy beer with my own money but if sam buys for me i won't mind you are still a drunkard because a drunkard is not the one who buys beer by himself is the one who drinks it whether it was given as a gift or bought with your money an arrogant person right a boastful person the one that will face destruction from god is the one who always looks for an opportunity for vain glory i'm not saying don't honor people don't acknowledge people i know you love me you respect me you honor me i love you and i honor you too however there is a limit and it is the responsibility of everybody to draw the line there are things people do for me i say no no this is too much and i will build my church if you allow me build it the gates of hell will not prevail say amen, amen. number three is god blessing us please pray in one minute before we continue and say lord build my life i've been trying to do this thing in my own strength please pray trying to enter a relationship by your own strength you tried makeup it didn't work you tried with on it didn't work you tried buying designers it didn't work because it doesn't work by all those things it takes the mercy of god open your mouth and pray i've tried it by my strength i've tried succeeding i've stretched my intellect from border to border tonight i give it up i give it up please pray in all your ways acknowledge him lord if you do not help me nobody can help me if you don't take me from where i am to the place of destiny there is no possibility outside of you can you pray in all your ways acknowledge you hallelujah please listen let it be a culture in your life every time men begin to clap become an usher point them to jesus hallelujah and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men you never see me say i did this the power of my might i, I did this do you know every time we finish koinonia when i go back home many times after counseling people i just i have one small chair it's my little altar with god i just get down on my knees sometimes when i come especially during the miracle service mighty things that god has done you know that's how i can just sometimes i can i can stay in that position and that's how i pass the night just acknowledging him i don't cry before people but i cry before god i just sit down and i see his faithfulness when we had twenty-five thousand likes on facebook exactly twenty-five thousand, i was on my knees before God and I said Lord I know people with TV ministries whose Facebook page is not even up to 3,000 
is the faithfulness of God. I said, Lord, to be able to influence people, I hear that already. This is just like the second service. There are over 1,000 plus people following us on Facebook already. I mean, on um, our online radio. Right now, connected, listening to me from around the world. During my birthday last year, there were about 16 nations. 16 nations called to say happy birthday. I've not gone to those almost all of those nations maybe but the faithfulness of God if you learn to acknowledge God some of you if God gives you half of the anointing he has given me your knee will never touch the ground again because of arrogance the knees that used to touch the ground this was how I used to cry in his presence in the night on concrete floor people are sleeping and I'm crying and say God please if you ever will need to use a man I'm available then I could not afford suit. Now that I can afford it, that suit must rub the ground. Except it's not my own. If it tears, let it tear. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. For your glory be lifted high. Be lifted high. For your glory be lifted high in my life, be lifted high, be lifted high. For your glory, be lifted high, be lifted high. Two more times. We live you the day you hold one million of your money you you that's the day you will know you don't fear god because prosperity gives you options can you stand and look at 100 million one billion and hold it and say lord this will not take my place in your place in my life oh god bless me for where you began to love god the day one guy said i love you by yourself you have not prayed since that day till today no need for prayer again the day someone said ah you are pretty the day they said need one small prayer and two people fell under the anointing god never saw you again ah this is how people cheat themselves out of the realm of the spirit they cheat themselves out of the place of power i tell you this is why the body of christ may never come into unity because of this spirit of pride I did this I built the church I did this it was by my wisdom I prophesied and it happened I spoke to her and she came with triplets the Bible says a man can have nothing except it be given to him by the father this was the secret of David David knew the hand of God he will say many are they that rise up against me many are they that say where is his god he said but thou O lord you are a shield for me that i have not fallen is not a product of my strength oh i'm this i don't like ladies keep quiet and give god all the praise i'm anointed i finished three days dry Come and see what God did in the meeting. Who told you? Who told you? He does these things that men may fear him. Let me tell you something. I show you a secret that will make God foul to keep lifting you. Men may talk. They, their talk will be, their saliva will dry from their mouth, but you will just be rising by a mystery no human can explain. Believe. Be lifted high, be 
lifted high Higher and higher, Lord Be lifted high Be lifted high This is already a message to somebody. This may be the missing key behind your glory that just faded. From last year, you found out that it was like Ichabod. There are people like that. I watch preachers on TV and without a sense of cynicism, I see the fading of the glory. People are still celebrating, but those who are in the spirit know there is nothing new in this grace. It's dried. Money is still coming, but it's dried, I tell you. I've had ministers that I respect so much. I've had ministers that I acknowledge the dealings of God in their life. Speaking recent times and I was shocked. How can a man touch a level of spiritual reality and not have anything else to tell the body? There are people who have been etched out of the program of God because of this pride. There are musicians who have left the scene of Nigerian gospel music never to come back again. Because right now if you don't give them 1.5 they will not come. You have to talk to multiple PAs. They've forgotten that it was one song they didn't even write. It came that day, they didn't eat. And they were praying. And God said, let me bless you. And he brought one song that opened them up. And from that day, have you noticed that most of these people, any other song they write, no matter what they do, it will never sell again. Because it was never about the song. It was about the grace. There are some of us here, please hear me, I'm speaking to you. I know pastors who anything they did used to work no matter how small it was like a charm they can organize a program in 24 hours but right now whether you put balloon whether you fly around with plane nothing happens because it about the glorious departed I tell you something the sin of pride is worse is worse than the sin of drunkenness and all of these other things When God will lift a man and you now stand and forget the God of your salvation. I spoke to a, a man of God one day. I used to know that man. Very interesting. Then God had not done anything much in his life. But I spoke to him recently and his arrogance oozed out like an odor. I could literally smell it with my physical nose. I was talking to him on phone. There are pastors who until you now have a seat they forgot how god took them you want to see joshua selman stand here with your fifty thousand or your hundred thousand not that god led you to honor not that they challenged you in church to sow they now stand as you are dropping it in the basket then you see the man of god ah, quarter for me to do that may god take my life for what be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high, be lifted high, be lifted high. For your glory be lifted high. Hallelujah. Please sit down. We have to hurry up. I already sense the presence of God. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third thing that we need to understand listen for the body of Christ to attain the unity of faith is to separate between doctrines and personal dealings with the spirit please listen what I'm telling you tonight is very deep pay attention there is a difference listen between your personal path of spiritual progress as earmarked by God on the strength of what he's making you become are we together now we all start our journey into the things of the spirit together but as we proceed the election of grace diverges men into different trajectories in the spirit are we together now 
And so if both of us start together and you are called into the prophetic ministry i'm called into the apostolic ministry you are called into business somewhere along the line there will be a divergence the same way students start course science whether engineering medicine you do the same thing are we together as you progress what happens you now begin to move to different programs that are custom built to produce that thought that knowledge in you now the trouble is this most people especially preachers have not been able to draw the line between their personal dealings with god and some of the ordinances and the covenants that they are compelled to make to strengthen their personal work with god so that they can be effective in dispensing the dimension of god committed to them they they do not draw that line and everything their personal dealing in the spirit they ship it to the altar and teach it as a doctrine are we together now listen paul said all things are lawful but not all things are expedient are we together now did you know that god can come my dear god can look at this lady and in his personal dealing with her because she's on her way to become the wife of a man of god and a man of influence are we together now god can tell her my personal dealing with you you are not going to wear trousers are we together now that is not about wrong or right you are occupying a position where you will be a mother to many and i need you to be as modest as possible so that you can give the clearest picture of a virtuous woman that is a personalized dealing but by the time you now ship your personal experience and use it as a template to define virtue you bring error in the body of christ are we together now there are personal things god can give a man are we together now stringent rules that god has given people it has nothing to do with old and new covenant it is your personal work with god god can be so meticulous as to define for you the kind of clothes to wear because of an assignment god can be so meticulous to define to you the kind of the number of children to have god can say because of the enormity of this assignment you cannot have more than two children if you like have eight but at my recommendation for efficiency is two it's left for you to sacrifice your personal ambition of wanting ten children to say lord for your glory if you are lonely after two you buy a puppy but anything outside that you position yourself are we together god can say because of where i'm lifting you you cannot have three cars at any given point people who sow 20 cars find the best three and give the rest out and people they don't know these are ordinances that control power in the spirit it's not something there are things that god has given me like personal rules it's in the bible samson was given a code they said samson the secret of your anointing is tied to your hair you are a nazarene separate unto god let no razor touch your head you can shave but not bow and delilah came he tried to do every kind of thing and she went to his hair bob the hair and bob the glory away from his life until he died are we together now listen most when i see the way many ministers are careless i'm surprised because you see increase in ministry can make you forget the precepts and the ordinances of god that were given to you there are agreements that i had with god i've done all kinds of crazy things there was a time the lord gave me an instruction i put hundred like one one thousand like hundred thousand on the ground and the lord said i should pray as i'm matching it that's how i kept matching it i was praying in tongues for hours declaring that finances will never have dominion over me will i tell you to do it it is a personalized dealing are we together now please listen this is giving us maturity separate between the ordinances of god given to you in the secret place for the purpose of efficiency and doctrines that are established by the integrity of the world they may not be wrong 
but God gave you that because of the capacity he has also given you somebody like Papa Adeboe his covenant with God was that every time somebody before like you worship God Papa he would go down Adeboe, on his knees his covenant are we together now whether in London before Obama like God, Papa, before anybody he would do this are we together are we together now? whether in London there are people because of their covenant with God they will never own more than two personal houses they will make many rich but they themselves are limited for many years many years I wanted to buy a car God stopped me I don't know how many times there are times I've smiled thinking I just went to God oh God I like this no way will I stop you from buying a car if you want to follow my own path for you God didn't direct you and it took <laughs> What is your dealing with God? There is no man of the secret place who will not eventually have personalized dealings with God where unique ordinances will be given to you from God. Hmm. It was William Branham that was given a sign by the Lord that every time his right hand begins to shake, the angel of the Lord that accompanies his ministry is in the place. And he will stand for hours and people are watching him and he says he's waiting for the arrival of the angel and people are angry which angel we've been here and then his hands begin to shake and he says the angel is here and you begin to see dramatic things you try it you don't know whether it's demonic or you see how spirits get into people because you now begin to see yours and say ah william branham whereas he's a spirit god is warning you the atmosphere of god's glory is causing a spirit to react instead of you to cry for help you are there rejoicing that you are growing listen it is costly and dangerous to take your personal spiritual precepts and bring it as a sign just like the example i shared did you know that there are ladies that god will give them rules no heavy makeup aside from powder and just something does it stop there he may not necessarily fight it but what he's saying because of what i am making you become can you sacrifice this for me? Are we together? Listen, if you love the Lord, there is nothing he will make as a demand from you that will be too much to give him. Hallelujah. It is lack of this separation between personal dealings i've done all kinds of crazy things with god but i cannot bring it as a doctrine i i stopped sharing my experiences the only experience that most people have had is my encounter with jesus there are many more but i will not share it because these are personal dealings and if you are not careful when you begin to share it it will make people to deviate from having confidence in the knowing the word to begin to search for encounters and when the devil sees your appetite for sight in the spirit is the exact raw material he needs to deceive you one day you will see something that will not be of god hallelujah so many altars today many constitutions of churches have the personal geos encounter as the rule for the church if geo does not eat salt because god suspected that he may have high blood pressure and god before that time you see that just a simple rule now he will now add it. if you eat salt in that church you are anti what god is doing that's wrong that's a personal dealing there are people read the bible because of certain kinds of anointings they were forced to be vegetarians so that they can host certain kinds of the anointing but you don't stop somebody from eating jesus for instance never ate meat he only ate fish cereals it's in the bible you never see a record where jesus ate meat who told paul kill and eat answer me who told when when remember those unclean animals pig everything when it came down ah peter said like jesus me too and jesus ah i had to do you are not going to the cross i know what i was doing he said kill and eat he didn't say just kill and look at it kill and eat listen 
you can see two people they will do the same thing god will keep quiet over somebody but for the other person god will say let's go back to the secret place i am saying god me again everybody is praying for one one hour god is letting them you pray for four hours god is saying you are not being serious and you are like god what is this watch this you don't compare your work with god with what is happening to the other person there is a template air marked for you based on what god is doing in you and based on where god is taking you to separate doctrines a good pastor will know how to teach people the truth void you may at times initiate your personal experiences to buttress on some point but the message cannot be hinged upon your personal experiences your personal experiences are too mysterious and haphazard it will take only you to understand them when you share it with people it will lead them into confusion there was a time in my life for instance where the lord asked me not to read my bible for one week you see that kind of strange thing imagine teaching you now you say thank god i always knew that this my not having appetite to read the bible is not backsliding i've been looking for an excuse even apostle don't say that to us i'm even saying it now warning you it was because god i was in a season of my life where god was teaching me certain things are we together now and god was teaching me that it is more profitable for me to receive the word than just to read it and the lord began to tell me that i am ever learning then but not coming to the knowledge of the truth i was obsessed with rema i would sit down with dick's bible and eat it cover to cover greek words check everything just look at it and i knew that something was wrong and the lord began to speak to me it's not just about dick's bible and strong concordance do you believe the little i have given you because faithfulness is the key to increase not just careless knowledge and the lord began to teach me that there are pastors that i'm allowing them to clean along certain paradigms in the spirit but this is unnecessary for your kind of ministry so you must stay with me to teach you the diet combination that will produce that apostolic grace in your life and so because of that it was an experiment for seven days but i cannot share that experience and use it as a doctrine hallelujah is god blessing you how many people have we confused as pastors with our personal experience because the man of god wants two children like i said anybody that has three four you are eyeing the person in your church five you are looking with anger six you are looking with rebellion why put people under pressure just because there are certain people because of their call they may not marry i hope you know oh yes men and women alike because of the nature at least we saw it with apostle paul because of the nature and the demands i always imagine if paul had a wife he would have been as good as not marrying because the number of times she will see him in her lifetime is countable prison today Ephesus today diana will influence somebody to go and you know all kinds of things so god knows why he just said look paul I know I will compensate you when you come to heaven, but for now, forget about the issue of women and pay attention. So if you are not married, does that mean you pressure people and every time somebody says, I want to get married, you there are people like that. Any area that is not a major area of dealing in the spirit, they don't pay attention to people when they are having those issues. They don't deal with them in that area. personalized dealings God can give you dealings food clothes the way to communicate certain things to do and not do it's not just the cause of the law it is his unique dealing for you because he has studied your vulnerability and your strength and he has seen that it's only in this kind of atmosphere like a buffer he creates for you so that you are safe and if you walk within the jurisdiction of his description i'm telling you you will never fall praise the lord let's take the last point and then we pray is god blessing us today hmm. romans chapter 12 from verse 3 we'll read the a part and establish the last point and then we'll pray thank you jesus 
Romans 12 verse 3 for I say through the grace given to me to every man listen that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think right but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith listen the Bible says there is a way a man can have a perception of himself that is correct. But there is a way a man, a church, can have a perception of himself, herself, to a point that the Bible calls it more highly. That means you have crossed the boundary, the acceptable level. The last point, this one has troubled me personally. The inability, closely related to the point I just shared. The inability to separate between, thus saith the Lord, and our human opinions. Please write it down. The inability for ministries, pastors, to separate between, thus saith the Lord, a prophetic word coming from God, and the sincere opinion of a man a combination of his exposure his intelligence please look up there are many churches today that even if the man of god coughs people say yes lord because the man has created an atmosphere i'm not laughing listen please we are, pray we are going to pray now there are men of god who have created a picture of ministry that everything that comes from them is of God. Are we together? We do not know that the Holy Spirit is not a fool. There are many times Paul will speak and say, I speak as a man. This is my opinion. My frank intellectual analysis on this issue. Because you see, we, we have transferred this inferiority that came from the continent of africa into our lives and we feel that the only way to respect us is when um we give people an idea that everything that comes out of the man of the the words of the man of god came directly from god what has this led in the body people refusing to marry because a man could not separate his opinion I can look at a lady come mama I can look at mama now are we together and see a very beautiful lady and say ah mama this lady is a nice lady oh if you have been praying I think this is this lady is worth praying about that's a human opinion he's saying amen <laughs> I'm busy using him as an example and you are saying amen <laughs> hallelujah oh yes ah he knows what he's here in Koinonia to receive are we together now so I am listen listen I'm telling him sincerely oh look at this lady we have all watched her in Koinonia she loves God she's a serious lady she's serious if God is sending you to a ministry this is the kind of person to be a pastor's wife not by any vision by intelligence and sight and logical conclusion based on the principles of the Word of God you know a bad woman when you see you don't need a dream you see all the attributes you know an irresponsible man when you see him you don't need any angel to appear and say this guy is not an he's not he doesn't like the things of god you are unequally yoked what you love is what he hates the more you are growing the more he's angry with your spiritual growth is that a good man what prayer do you need about it you pack your load and leave god gave us wisdom he said wisdom is profitable to direct so back to my example i can now tell mama but if because of my arrogance and now say mama that's your wife wife that's that's your that's your husband are we together now let me tell you what i've done to both of them i have tied them in an unholy i have put a stronghold upon their minds are we together now whereas this guy may be looking at another lady his heart is somewhere he has even started the process laying the foundation and all of this and now i'm coming to scatter the whole building because of a supposed vision 
another thing is seeing somebody and tell him i'm looking at you and i um go and start trailer business this guy is saying god is sending me to oil and gas he say trailer and because he respects me this guy for 10 years is trying to buy one truck are we together now listen men of god have destroyed the hopes the dreams the lives of people if you need money in your church and a man says i want to build i've gathered six million and you want to say so don't say god is demanding your isaac i'm telling you now my polite proposal is better than an armed robber's gun think about it that's not prophecy that's a threat you are threatening the man to withdraw his six million and deposit it otherwise armed robbers will come and truly if armed robbers come one day you say ah this man is a man of god no he's not a man of god that's not the reason why armed robbers came listen every pastor and man of god here listen we owe god accountability you know years ago i didn't used to know the if the effect of my words on people i used to think when i just speak to people carelessly it won't mean anything to them but as i kept growing in leadership i got to learn that the words of a leader is like the words of a father it makes impact you can look at a lady right now and say i'm proud of you just that little step to you is no big deal but that will be the basis of our seriousness in the spirit ah, ah. joshua Selman said he's proud of me ah out of everybody in koinonia because to you it's no big deal because you are used to being celebrated to someone who has never received a comment from somebody the same way you look at somebody and say you're a bad girl you were joking and the lady is crying for one week oh god i repent wrong words we have not separated thus saith the lord from our sincere human opinion there are times people have met me over issues and i've told them honestly God has not told me anything about this issue. However, let's look at it from the Bible. Okay, this is what you are doing. No, the Bible prohibits this. Try this, take it this way. And then sometimes in the midst of it, God will speak expressly. And I'll say, this is the word of the Lord to you. And when I think what I said was of God, if I later discover that at my level of growth or for whatever reason, I didn't hear well. I will not have the embarrassment to say sorry i think we should pray about this thing again that day i thought it was god that said you should buy a bicycle but right now i found out that god has no business with you buying any bicycle let's pray do you have the courage brothers and sisters to separate between the word of god spoken to you to people or to yourself and your sincere human opinion please sit down the body of christ has been destroyed because of this a man makes a mistake simply acknowledge it was a mistake he said are you joking even my mistakes are pro no 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 no. that dimension now is not of god once you get to that point is insecurity spiritualized hallelujah because you see in africa we have a lot of respect for the words of men of god and please listen pastors heads of departments and maybe all the people in our community online don't be under pressure to speak to people if god has not said anything it does not mean you are not anointed hallelujah so we have all kinds of people confused right now how many people have made mistakes in their marriage because it was a man of god that said so you must marry so 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 and so person now he married the lady and he doesn't know what to do with her and they are all angry and they are confused and the man of god is there i know men of god who have looked at people and say relocate you shouldn't be doing anything in nigeria and sincerely he just perceived in his spirit that this guy should be abroad he now said go to kenya the guy is living like a a fugitive in kenya whereas he was living with authority he sold his house sold everything and left Could it be that there are people seated here right now and is the supposed word from a man of God that has kept you limited? You wanted to do business and the man said you don't have any 
any business doing any business right and now you've sat down because you thought that oh my own is just ministry that is coming and you are getting poor you are getting broke the day you went to go and meet uh, maybe the lady's parents for introduction they say what are you doing you say according to what my pastor told me he said i should not worry it would be like the twinkling of an eye and the father looks at you and he says, you have the courage to come and enter my gate the next time you come i will call police and they will catch you and you go back disappointed oh god did you not speak to me i refuse to be a fool i refuse to let the pursuit of god look like stupidity whenever there is no direct word from the lord i work with the principles of the word how many men of god were doing well in ministry until a prophet or an apostle somewhere in a meeting prophesied to them i know pastors who have no business having churches they are not supposed to open churches but they went and met a man of god now the man may not be wrong but he spoke a word he said i'm looking at you and i see 17 branches god is giving you speed the guy started dying the money that god allocated for the program he now started spreading 17 branches around and now he's killing him weekly budget 2.5 whereas his annual money that he's receiving from the small members is 500 000. where is he going to get the other money from so he starts lying he starts creating a prophecy session drop your 30 000 i speak to you that's what has led men of god into all of these things because of pressure separate between the word of the lord directly see and a sincere communication of the truths of the kingdom there are times i prepare a message not that god told me necessarily i sat down as a leader i understand how to build people i know that if you have a ministry with people you must build them in the area of spiritual growth build them in character build them in finances family life leadership interpersonal skills these are things that are we, we are human beings god does not need to tell me that the wisdom of the world has taught me that you must build people holistically there are times i come on stage here and god completely from everything i've planned that does not mean he did not give the inspiration but at this current time this is what he wants to be said and i'm unashamed i drop it there are times i come here and i tell you this is what the lord spoke to me this word came from god this is what he wants us to do it is not unspiritual to acknowledge your humanity listen to my message why revivals die the humanity of men people have sent me names dio uh shegu who and who they say apostle who do you think among these three guys i said no 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 god has not told me anything i don't even want to start deceiving you but there are some of us here especially some of us who are just starting in ministry you are under pressure when you get that kind of text you just laugh and do tinini tanana and then it just lands on dial and you send back say dial i hear dial and now the lady and maybe dial is not even born again you now pin this lady with this this unspiritual brother for many years and she cannot move forward i deliver anyone here who has been under the influence of a wrong prophetic word that has tied you down and has refused you from moving forward in the name of the lord jesus christ a man of god who is limited in scope sees somebody who wants to do international business and he says no this is not of god he's using his limitation about his poor understanding on financial intelligence and destroying the passion of another person to expand you don't do that and then the worst part is when we start saying it's from god so right now brothers let me just buttress on this point but brothers cannot come and meet a lady you can't come and meet a sincere lady and just tell her oh you love god you have to start say look it was by 241 between 241 or 242 uh, sorry i was dragging you around 241 or 242 i was just strolling around somewhere and i saw what looked like a vision i said lord is this you and he was silent now the lady is standing and wondering what's this guy 
saying now. Of course, she knows where you are going to. And he says, look, on a very good day, me, I'm just minding my business, but how can I be negligent of this heavenly call now that I've seen this call? And now the lady wants to say no, but she has been threatened by what? A vision. God said, you are my wife. I'm not saying, go and think about it. What is the answer? The lady said, well, it's too early. I don't know you. Is this what we are saying? Me too. Do I know the vision? I, I saw it. I, ah. As funny as what I'm saying is, this is the template, the only way many brothers in many churches know how to ask a lady. They just come and say, what did, are you still wasting my time or I plan to marry based on what God told me. He showed me July. Are you doing this thing or not? Let's just know. And it keeps backfiring again and again and again because you see the laws of the spirit are unemotional. This again is also the reason why people are confused. And let me just touch on this and then we'll pray. Today, you go to bed and you see Amaka. Bless you, darling. Tomorrow, as soon as you wake up, you see Shalhoma. You are washing your face and you saw her face. I say, I reject it. You saw it again. Are we together now? Next week, you now see Martha. And then the individual, is he sincere? Yes. Is she sincere? Yes. But because you have tied your, your paradigm, are we together now? To only visions, you are confused. You saw seven sisters in one week. You are not a bad brother, but you are seriously confused. You can see me, come matter. You can see me wearing suit and matter dressed like this. It can mean intimacy, not marriage. You have to go back to God to find out what he's saying. That you saw what looked like suit does not mean it's marriage. A ring can be a symbol of authority, not a vow to say I do. You see, you, 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 you come down and then be careful some of these books. Please, um, um, it's my job and my duty to address these things. Although that's really not what I'm talking about. But since it has come, let's just let it land. There are books many of us have read. Written by sincere people who have been confused. That's why a man can be married. And now be looking at a lady and then another prophet will come and say well i don't know how to tell you this thing but this lady you have married although you are 10 years in marriage she's the reason why your ministry is not moving forward i stand as a prophet of god to declare to you is there a lady called jane in koinonia he said yes yes ma'am I'm, I'm. i said leave your wife go to jane now the man will not leave her in one day but automatically he was not eating her food again and then he now calls jane 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 how now i was service today then he said fine daddy he said why must you call me daddy <laughs> it has it has started i will talk oh, my name is joshua selman <laughs> and the wife is surprised He's prayed. He has suddenly developed an unusual passion for prayer in the night. And you go to the parlor and you see he's, he's secretly calling. Jane, what does it take to do your wedding sharp sharp? And he's planning on leaving his wife because somebody said, first say the Lord. And in the church we are so unspiritual that anybody just stands and because he tells you something that is true, then he now uses it to confuse you. Please listen to me anyone here who has left his financial pursuit because a man of god spoke to you and said you don't need it go back and carry those notebooks and start reading it otherwise you would you would chew your hands in the future to come the bible says a lazy man will not eat it has nothing to do with with vision are we together now if you graduate and you want to become a millionaire from you've nothing is coming in your hands now get a job and start from there do you need a vision there are two ways God directs men. He can say start and he can say stop. So if he doesn't say anything, start. I need to address this. Thus saith the Lord has destroyed a lot of people. 
so we have gotten into all kinds of things thank you my dear i went to pray for a woman some years ago god is my witness i saw over 21 anointing oils and this 21 anointing oils was from different men of god and different prophets 21 none of them was free by the way not one was free she went to one woman one prophetess i was told that if you go to the woman's place now i'm not criticizing maybe the woman is listening to the message hallelujah and then the woman said you have to camp in her hostel you must buy her water you must eat only from her restaurant who does not know that's business skill no 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 no! don't threaten me with spirituality who does not know if i have a ministry wouldn't i want you to eat from my restaurant it's a very sincere desire to generate revenue don't spiritualize it and make it look like if you eat my rice there's there's the way that rice this is is it not uncle Ben's or whatever they brought it they, they cook that rice you spiritualize it and threaten people there are members who cannot go and buy food in certain places because some men of God have supposedly put an embargo. Haba. You want to take your children to a good school. But the man of God has said, if it's not my school, except you are not under this ministry and you are threatened, I set you free. I deliver you from that nonsense this night in the name of Jesus Christ. One of the benefits of spiritual growth is freedom. Marry me or you die. You say, oh, no problem. I'm already dead. You don't threaten me. I marry because of love, not force. If you are in a hurry, go and find somebody and go and meet the parents. We give this terrible idea about God and it is the prophetic and apostolic ministry that has brought this bad idea about God. Everything that a man wants, he uses prophecy to make it happen. The Lord is speaking to me right now. Everybody, package 10, 10,000. Come and drop it. Rub my shoes with it. It's a sign of speed. The speed I've experienced in two years of ministry. Carry that seed. Mr. Man, you need money. No problem. God designed a system to honor you. Don't tell lies and threaten the people. For when God speaks, there is grace for performance. There are many angry people. You see them remove the envelope and they are just walking to the man of God with anger. They get there and they just kneel down and just drop the tear and say, pray for me. There are many members are angry and I foresee a revolt if we don't change. Because as TV ministry is exposing people right now, a day will come, Koinonia is going on air and more people will hear these truths. And when it happens, people will say, pastor, my money. Because all that long story you have been threatening me i will say it without any fear or favor i'm a man of god there is a way i can come to you right now and tell you i am hungry please give me food and you will bless me but when i come and say the lord instructs even when god commanded elijah he didn't go to one and say god has said it did you hear bring food he said madam bring food for me Thus saith the Lord. People have mortgaged their vehicles. They carried their jeeps and gave a man of God. Because he said, God said, bring it. God is not an idiot. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times that those kinds of instructions will come. I can't tell you how many times God has made a demand of my resources, demand of any and everything. However, anything that is not done by love brothers and sisters is sin don't let any man threaten you to marry him in the name of prophecy don't let any man threaten you the worst one is becoming part of a church because of prophecy so like all these guys now serving the lord the day now they are ready to go and start their ministries or do something the man of god now stands and says if any of you leaves this assembly except i'm not a man of god there is a curse upon you nonsense there's no such thing as that except if they believe it they'll go and die as a result of lack of carelessness and preparation not because of insecurity expressed in a threat are we together now there are so many pastors they can't marry they can't get a job 
they can't move because they are serving a self-centered man of god who is enjoying their ministry and will never allow them to move the moment they want to move you say the cause remember and they now stay back i deliver you tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ listen our god is a good god our god is not a wicked god who comes out to just kill people and destroy their lives men kill themselves because of their violation of kingdom principles we're going to pray ephesians chapter 4 says it is for this reason he gave unto some when you read from verse 12 apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors teachers he says for the edification the maturing of the saints that's what is happening to you i'm not teaching you this listen please look up to be judgmental and imbalanced because some of you your various churches whether here or at home you have men of god that do some of these things the goal is not to go back with the spirit of arrogance and rebellion but the goal is to have a settled confidence immovable and unshakable to separate between thus saith the lord and anything that is a lie hallelujah but i know whom i have believed he says and i am persuaded that he is able So number one I spoke about the fact that God is always in the church I'm doing a review everyone say God is always in the church yes regardless of the imperfections God is always in the church when you go to church look for God don't look for doctrines when you go to church look for God don't look for dress code when you go to church look for God not a man's ability to speak good English or otherwise. Not a man's ability to gather degrees. And then you use that to mean, oh, this guy knows what he's saying. No. When you go to church, don't go around looking for mundane things. Go to church looking for the one who is in the middle of the lampstands. Bypass the mistakes. Bypass the arrogance. Bypass the flesh and find god if you search for him you will find him in every church because he's there for the sake of two or three who are gathered in his name the rest may be gathered in another name but when two or three are gathered in his name what did he say will happen he said there i am not by proxy in their midst number two god is the builder of the church and by extension the builder of your life always know that number three separate between your personalized dealings with god and the doctrines that god commits unto you your personal dealings with god may require you following some strict pathways that are for your personal consumption and not for the church not for members generally separate it feed the people with the truth as committed to you unto them and separate between your personal dealings and what god is telling them number four separate between thus saith the lord and your human opinions your human opinion can be spiritual and it can also be equivalent to the word of god but have the unashamedness to admit before people especially those who honor you and esteem you to be so anointed have the meekness to tell them this is my perspective on this issue and when god speaks have the unreserved boldness to say this was from god if i perish let me perish please rise up on your feet hallelujah we are going to pray i'd like you to please participate in the prayer i thought i'll have time 
to round off with Psalm 133, a mystery God showed me about the blessing released when the corporate body comes, but our time is up. But I think we've had enough. Listen to me. Jesus said, look up everybody, and ye shall know the truth. He says, and the truth shall make you free. He says, therefore, if the Son of Man sets you free, you are free indeed. Many of us have been saved, but we are not free because of these things. And we are in our way contributing to destroying the body of Christ with these points that I've shared. Pride. Claiming everything that is done is from you. Or criticizing ministries. You call a ministry and say, this ministry, they are not anointed. They don't even have rema. There's no revelation in this ministry. There are books God wants you to read. And you feel I've left this man far. Papa Ia Deboe comes for a crusade. And you cannot attend. Because you think my level of revelation is far exceeding this thing. This man is going to be teaching us as if we are in nursery school. When you search for God, you will find him in every church. Take my word for it. When you search for God, the God that I serve, he's not just in your church. He's not just in Koinonia. When you search for him, you will find him. He was found in prisons. He was found in different places in the Bible. I choose to seek God, not the perfection of men. I choose to seek God, not the dexterity of ministries. I choose to seek God. When I go for a, min a meeting, I ignore the mistakes of the man of God. I ignore the limitations. I see his disalignments here and there, but I sustain a spirit of maturity. Did you know, brothers and sisters, and I say this with all humility, we are praying. I've had the privilege to be called by different people and they have spoken to me about men of God and their limitations I think I was sharing with you was it some weeks ago one of them was one very great man of God and you know some people called me to say certain things that I cannot even begin to say here and they were true they were not a lie so when they said all these things to me I had started seeing these signs personally but then when it, it it personally broke me the lady had to do it in secrecy because this is i mean if you count the men of god in this country maybe the first 10 he will, will be among them repeatedly but i told them something i said listen i'm not justifying the things the man of god is doing but I can tell you authoritatively, he's still a man of God. Whether you choose to disbelieve him or not, I will build my church. If he refuses to align in the secret place and amend for those imperfections, he has God alone to face. But as far as the building of the church is concerned, Christ alone must be glorified. Do not let the imperfections of churches and men of God stop you from seeing God and receiving there are men of God who are very arrogant but I listen to them passionately because my focus is not their arrogance they should finish their boasting and then let me hear what God has to say and I know they carry something that I need so I ignore all of those things there are men of God who are very careless I ignore their carelessness and I pay attention there are men of God who are very vulnerable when you look at them, you don't know what they can do. But I ignore those things and I pay attention. There are men of God who you know are standing very fine between the bridge of witchcraft and ministry. I ignore all of those things. I have had a passion to find God. That's why I find him everywhere. It doesn't matter where I look. I find him. You stop seeking for him and started seeking for perfection. In a man of God, in koinonia, in your ministry. You, search, you stop searching for him and you started seeking for perfection in every book. You started seeking for which Greek word is correct or wrong. And he stops blessing you. 
Say, Lord, help me that everywhere I go in the body of Christ, let me search for Jesus, not perfection. Lift your voice and pray. A seeker of Jesus, not perfection. A seeker of Jesus. Man may be imperfect. Man may not have the excellence you are looking for. They may not have the organization you are looking for. But can you find Jesus in your church? Can you find Jesus in your pastor? Can you find Jesus in the church in Zaria? Can you find Jesus in the church in the north? Can you find Jesus in the church in Nigeria? Yes, I know there are manipulations. Yes, I know there are wrong prophecies. I know that there are manifestations here and there of witchcraft. I know there are people whose God is their belly. But can you find Jesus in the church? Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I take away that attitude of cynicism. I take away that attitude of resentment. I take away that attitude of self-centeredness. I search for Jesus in every church I search for Jesus in the Catholic Church I search for Jesus in MFM in living faith in deeper life I search for Jesus hallelujah prayer point number two Lord I relinquish dependence on the flesh and all the things that you have accomplished through me i lift my eyes from today on you alone and i will never lean on my own understanding lift your voice and pray father i repent for making men look at me instead of you i repent for drawing the attention of men to myself instead of you are we praying Lord, I've not used my beauty to direct men to the king. I've not used my prosperity to direct men to the king. I have a passion for being celebrated to a default, to a point where I don't care if my king is exalted or not. Lift your voice and pray. Let pride die in my life. Let fame glory die in my life. hallelujah hallelujah we'll combine the third and fourth point and pray together we're going to pray and say lord i pray that all those who believe in your word upon my mouth will not be misled by my inability to separate between what you are saying and what I'm suggesting to them lift your voice and pray Lord in any way I've confused people bring direction to them are we praying in koinonia Lord I pray for the millions that submit to the grace of God upon my life and believe in the word of God upon my mouth may I never mislead them as a result of my ego oh may i not say god is saying when you are not speaking may i have the humility to separate between my personal suggestions and the word of the lord i receive grace not to put men in bondage i receive grace not to yoke men i receive grace to separate my personal dealings from that which you want to take.
tell the body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. We are going to pray. Sorry, there's no time. One of the blessings of the body of Christ is the ability to contact the corporate anointing. Listen, let me tell you something. It's called the power of a corporate life. Let me just share this mystery. Give me one minute. Listen. If there is a dimension that I need to step into a new level of prosperity or grace, but because of my personal dealings with God, I have not yet learned how to align the Holy Spirit so that I can make that possibility at work in life. I can take advantage of a Jimmy's deadness and enter that dimension. Are we together now? The reason why when one person opens it to the body, everybody starts entering. It's called power of a corporate life. It's there. The oil comes for head of Aaron, but does not stop there. Any boy connected to that spiritual tribe, that family, they become partakers of that grace. So all it takes but that's the beauty everybody does not have to open every door by themselves so you call the door you have opened from your secret place i come the door i've opened from my secret place in worship there is a meaning i leave that meeting with a grave i never would have any listen some of you by watching the worship team something was calling your music ministry you had the grace but you didn't have the ability to write songs but now somebody the grace to write songs started singing and that spirit fell upon you right now there are people who were not songwriters but because they were able to tap into the grace are we together now there are people that revelation and that grace the spirit of prayer and supplication but were able to when you keep for colonia and then you started attending the meetings and then you went to the prayer but something happened to you you contacted the spirit of prayer and application now you can run eight hours you are stretching in the spirit seven hours and it's like you just detaching it there is a grace that makes it happen are we together you can begin to from in the night and pray till 12 in the afternoon and it does not tell because the power of the corporate anointing has come up there are people who do not have the appetite for excellence they do not even have the recognition of it but once you come to a mystery all of a sudden as a pastor you start noticing and in Koinonia, nobody said it's now time for offering, and then people clap and you say, Wow, there can be a way. You are not just seeing, there is a spirit behind it, and that spirit comes upon you, and all of a sudden, you find out that it begins to affect the area of your life. The day you organize a meeting, you will see yourself reproducing Koinonia. That's that you will know how much you have carried the grace. There are some of you here, you are music ministers. The day you go to minister somewhere, you will be shocked, you will think you are in Koinonia. All of a sudden, you will see graces. That's what happened to a lot of pastors. Some of them just visited. They just came and sat down. I didn't even prophesy to them. They just got up and went back to their meetings. And they were surprised. Listen, let me tell you the shocking thing. When they went to their, when they came for Koinonia, their keyboard did not follow them. Are we together? Their leaders did not follow them. But because of the anointing they came with, all their leaders started behaving the way the leaders behave in that ministry. It's an anointing. It's called the power of a corporate life you enter into realms that your personal alignment would not have afforded you to enter on the strength of unity i like us to pray tonight as i just pray for us quickly i like you to say lord every grace that i need but my personal alignment has not been able to bring me into and it's available in this house i open up my spirit to receive it lift your voice and pray 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 you're a prayer warrior but you are poor it means there is a grace there is a grace that is yet to come upon your life you are anointed but there are no members there is a grace that you need you are prosperous but you don't pray there is a grace that you need you are anointed but there's no speed in your life oh pray come on what grace is lacking in my 
life and is available. What grace is lacking in my life? Pray we are rounding up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll just leave the impartation for next week. Please don't miss next week's meeting. Before I come up, we are going to have a session, like a panel, four people. We are going to be discussing very serious matters of the kingdom. A panel, four people, having some deep questions about our work with the spirit dimensions we touch on four areas spiritual growth finances family life and leadership we're going to touch on these four areas please don't miss it hallelujah we're going to sit down and have people discuss epochal dimensions this is not teaching this is not teaching we're going to give people an opportunity for god to just correct things and after that our minister if i'm to do an impartation now our time will go however please i want you to pray and say father whatever is not working in my life but i have seen another person in koinonia working in it that grace i open up that it must come upon my life right now please pray there are prayer warriors in this place there are millionaires in this place there are exceptional leaders in this place there are men and women of uncommon influence hear me brothers and sisters there is a variety of spiritual graces from different ministries different encounters different perspectives different spiritual paradigms it takes all it takes openness Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the assignment for you is in preparation for Friday. Write down, listen, write down all the areas of your life where you have seen the grace of God work. Take note of it. But write down the areas of your life. Listen, please. Write down the areas of your life where you have not seen the notable grace of God working. Come with that list. We are going to pray on it on Friday. I'm not interested in the one that is working. Are we together? That's why you think certain men of God are fake. Because they are the only ones carrying certain levels of graces. And it's not supposed to be. If you are a prayer warrior and you are broke, it's because there is a grace you have not received. Are we together? If you are a business person who does not pray, there is a grace you have ignored. So the body of Christ gives us an opportunity to step into anointings brothers and sisters you will never prosper in an area where the grace is not available it's not an issue of trying please write it down oh in my finances i'm a millionaire this is already done in my prayer life god is helping me i'm doing very well but in my work life uh -uh, i think there's a problem in the area of character i think something is wrong or i i do well but everything I do does not work. I try to call people into anything and they don't come. There is a grace for influence that you don't have. Write it down. With your heart open, we are going to flog it out here on Friday. Ask Lucifer what happened to him. There was war even in heaven. The conscious exclusion. Oh, I'm healthy. Why should I pray? I'm healthy. Why should I fast? So we have all this fire brigade approach. Only when things go wrong, we now come and bribe God with money. We bribe God with tight. We bribe God with our shoe. And the time we wrap something and say, God, just take and solve my problem. And God is saying, am I that cheap to you? Is this all you know about me? Oh, I'm a business tycoon. I'm a multi-millionaire. I have, I have all kinds of companies running everywhere. And then... By the time your wisdom fools you, you now come and say, Oh God, God, you know, uh -uh. you said you were a tycoon. 
tycoons are intelligent people, you continue. Listen, when other men have tried it in themselves, you better know why God blesses you. And be outspoken about it. Have a testimony of the love and the faithfulness of God. Are we together? Conscious exclusion of God. The embarrassment, still on that same point. The embarrassment of the need for assistance and dependence of God, on God. The embarrassment that comes with acknowledging your need to be helped. There are many people who like to say, nobody helped me. Nobody helped me. I did it by myself. Nobody helped me. I rose from rags to riches by myself. I became a millionaire by myself. I became anointed by myself. No man of God laid hands on me. I was rolling under the floor in the presence of God. Then an angel appeared to me and said, Son, stand up. From today, I anoint you over this and that and we talk those foolish things. Most people find it embarrassing to say their lives are a product of many contributions. We think that the moment you acknowledge, ah, at this point in my life, God used a genie to help me. At this point in my life, God used Sam to help me. It makes you cheap. So we rather trivialize all the help and we join God in the equation. Okay, God, I gave my life to you. That's all right. That's your own honor. Enjoy that one. But this one, wisdom, I, I have it. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him. Have you read that? A man can receive nothing. That's why many people, the lady will come and say, look, by God's grace, so it's not pride, but am I not beautiful? And you find out that you never marry. Nobody will even tell you good money. And you are wondering why. With all this beauty, you see that the brothers are blind, they leave me, they are not blind. But there is a God that gives husband and wife. And you have excluded that God out of your life because you think you are okay. Or a brother who got a small job, 150,000. I say, God forbid, I can't marry any kind of lady. I've mean, I mean, I, I paid my price. I have 150,000 naira job. Let me describe the kind of lady. And God says, This is a rich, a stupid, stupid boy who does not know how God assists men to rise. Then they now threaten you that they are going to downsize people. And they, you, you are shocked to find out that although you are, you are brilliant, your name is there. You are about to. God will say, use your power and your might and keep yourself there. Total dependence on Jesus. Outspoken dependence on Jesus. Not that you say they know. We don't know. Say it. Let your life show it. Let your ringtone show it. Let everything show it. You know this Christian thing, I don't want to put it on my head. You better put it on your head. That is the symbol of safety. You better put it on your head. In this wicked world now, put it on your head clearly so that you'll be free. Are we together? I don't know about you, but I depend on him. I depend on him. If God does not assist me, no man can assist me. If God does not help me, he said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hill. From when, how can I write the equation of my life and then add God? I will not even add God. He's the Alpha Omega. If there is anything to add, maybe it's me that somewhere, I, he will even allow me to add and say, okay, and my addition is my alignment. I will tell that. Please, I want you to repent tonight. Especially some of us here and there that have results here and there in our lives. In business, like that gentleman who came out smiling, that he, he made one million. You see that? It's a wonderful testimony. You can now stand up and say, No, I must get my own one million. And then start the journey of pain in your life. If God does not give a man anything, you can't have it. You can't have it. You have to understand this. That's why people don't get saved. Let me tell you. That's why people don't get saved. And you mean, if you point someone here and tell him there is a multi-million naira business 
in Abuja you want to connect him with? Will he be too busy? He won't be too busy. The wife will say, honey, but I thought we were supposed to have a time together. I said, which time? I will slap you now. You know, with the money, we'll have a time together. Let's go to Abuja. Because you consider it to be valuable. Valuable. So when the house of God becomes something you have to advise yourself to go, it's a sign you are excluding God out of your life. Are we together now? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. He didn't go alone. Let us go. Let us go. I've said it again. Please, if you're a parent here, hear me. As much as God grants you grace, involve your children in your conviction. Especially if your children are as small as this are, are, are little children. Are we together? Don't leave the children with nanny and say they used to make noise. They should make noise. It's better to make noise in the presence of God than keep them at home and allow a strange spirit enter them and begin the journey of pain in your life. Let them come and sleep here. Nobody's complaining. I'd like you to pray one minute while you are seated and say, Lord, you are not one of those important things in my life. I repent for just acting you. After doing everything I think is the reason why my life is moving, I now add you to feel spiritual. Lift your voice and say, I repent. I repent of that pride. I repent of that pride. Kabbalah ko satay. I acknowledge you. Listen. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. Except the Lord builds a ministry. Except the Lord builds a family. Except the Lord builds a business. They labor in vain. He didn't say they will not do it. They labor in vain. Pouring water in the basket. Pouring water in a basket, it will never fool. Pour the water in the whole world in a basket, no miracle will make it fool. So that's the first reason. Still on point one, let's look at the scripture God showed me. Isaiah 31, verse 1 to 3. Media, is it possible? Can we have it? Isaiah 31, verse 1 to 3. God gave me a sound warning that I should give it to us, not like a threat or something. But I think it's an advice that is very instrumental to us. Isaiah 31 from verse 1 to 3. Let's just hurry up before they find it. The danger of trying to use the world's way of doing things to get God's result. Are we together now? Still part of point one is an addition I noted here and I must explain it. The danger of using the world's formula and expecting God's result. It does not happen. The world has its way of getting money. The world has its way of parenting. The world has its way of getting fame. Listen. The world has its way of, li of, of living long. The world has its way of understanding. When you come to God, the kingdom of God is an entirely different system. The Bible says you are in the world, but not of the world. Right? Isaiah 31, you can write it and go and read it. He said, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Woe to them that go down to Egypt. Egypt is the place of captivity. The dark world. This includes going to Habalis. Please look up. Let me talk to us. Are you not amazed, Jimmy, at the rate at which people, Christians, run to the village, run to Habalis? We join God. And we join a little of something they give you like a belt on your waist. You are still, I don't care even if it's Jesus that is written on it. A herbalist is a herbalist. They gave you something. They said during your exam, you should just take it. You have to stand by one in the afternoon. Exactly one. Take it with your right hand. It's nonsense. I don't care even if you are reciting whatever. Be careful. Everything that is of God is consistent with this one. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Very, very important. Woe to them who go down to Egypt for help. God has his way of doing things. You want to build a house. The world has his way of building a house. The kingdom has his way of building a house. You want to access wealth and prosperity. The world has his way of doing things. Many believers go down to Egypt. 
and we try to access help whereas there is no help in Egypt for 430 years they were in Egypt there was no help until they left Egypt and they began to walk are we together I'm not against enlightenment but some of these some of these junk materials we read all around that attempt to suggest facts and figures that negate the word of God yet we adopt them and we call it civilization please look at me look at me let me have your attention I don't care the word of God transcends every generation whether you are young whether you are old there are irrefutable truths that defines the standards of God say amen Woe to them who go down to Egypt for them. You want to build a house. You are putting yourself under pressure. The world says go to the bank and go and collect loan. Correct? Go and collect loan. And you don't inquire from God. You run and go to the bank. They give you a loan. The next day an armed robber comes and puts a gun. And says you better bring out that loan. I was in the bank. Bring everything out. And then you have two loans to pay. The one you need to build the house and all of that and the journey starts and at the end of your life you have high blood pressure you have stroke the world says if you want to keep a wife beat her beat her once let her see you beat her then she will know you are man enough that's the world's way now you are born again but those advices are still coming once in a while your uncle says that advice i gave you i think he's working are we together The Bible says the divine health is a possibility. I'm not against medicine and all of that. But divine health is a possibility. And for you, you have never tried to stretch your faith for once. To believe God and say, I can live here. Are we together? The Bible says favor is possible. The world's version of favor is bribe and corruption. You force it. Go to them who go down to Egypt. There is a way God finances and builds his church. You didn't find out. And so you play gimmicks on people. All kinds of gimmicks on people. And you find out that every Sunday, every Saturday, you are always on deficit. God gave you a child. There is a formula for paying the school fees of the child. Don't complain that there's no money. Go to God and find out. Lord, I was pregnant for nine months. I'm aware that there are women who have not been able to give birth. How did you design funding the destiny of this child? Please hear what I'm saying because this is a very serious issue. How many husbands and wives come together? How many young people, how many leaders sit down and say, look, we are confused. Let's get God in this picture. Lord, we are absolutely confused. We need you to step in. They say, let's deliberate then later on, when it gets too hard, he says, let's pray in tongues for five minutes. God, who lied to you that adding God to your life is a minus? Who lied to you that adding God to your business is a minus? Who lied to you, listen, that adding God to your relationship is a minus? Who deceived you that adding God to your church is a minus? Adding God to your friends and driving out the bad ones is a minus. Oh, I don't want to lose him. You better lose him. If, if adding God to his life is what will make him to go, that's a sign that you have been delivered. Please hear what I'm saying. There are people seated hearing me. You have never given your heart to Jesus Christ. You have never. You've had preachers speak again and again. Every time they talk, you just sit down outside and say, ah, I was touched by ah, ah. See how this guy is really talking about God. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't mean to scare you, but let me just tell you one truth that we have not had for a long time. Hellfire is free. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people there, some left this morning. As you were coming for Koinonia, 
some people left they are there right now as we speak preach whatever you want to preach but i can tell you one thing and it's very very good so you can be as arrogant as you want to be and say i'm an atheist i went to america and i spent two, two years i went to harvard I, that's all right you are permitted to carry your foolishness for as long as it last but i can tell you one thing only a fool will say in his heart there is no good. please hear me some of us are parents and i say all due respect there are many fathers and there are many mothers some listening to me by radio your family is most diving because as the priest of the home you have refused to bring god when your wife is praying you now say honey make sure you pray for me you just enter the blanket no. let me challenge any young man here planning to marry if you are not more spiritual than the woman you want to marry you are in trouble you better catch up join prayer ban on tuesday join have a personal prayer time and double up. And I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Your spirituality defines everything. I wish above all things that you prosper even to the degree that your soul prospers. What shall it profit a man, the Bible says, if you gain the whole world, if you have all the ministries in the world and at the end of it, lose your soul. Praise the Lord. So there are people seated hearing me you really need to ask yourself this question. Have, have I been saved? Am I born again? I know I came for healing. I came for a miracle. I know I'm 65 years old. I know I'm 12 years old. Are you born again? Have you really brought Jesus to your life? An open invitation to say, Lord, I'm tired of mismanaging my life. My intelligence is failing me woefully. I come to you. I come to you. As a child will run to his father. Right? The prodigal son came to himself. And said, look, how many hired servants has my father? I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say, father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me now as one of your servants. And the Bible says, while he saw him. Coming afar off, he ran, embraced him, kissed him. And restored and put back the seed. The evil in the world is too much for any man to be living his life without Christ. That you took beer and drove yourself from Karuna to Zaria is the mercy of God. You keep trying it. One day you just open your eyes and find out you are not in the world. Disrespect for God and his values. I'm going to make an altar call now. We need to make it. The atmosphere is right for an altar call. Two altar calls in one. Please pay attention. Two altar calls. Just carry the lady gently. You are here seated listening to me. Those online, pay attention to Jesus is calling you. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says, Take upon me my yoke and learn of me. For I am lowly in heart. Right? He says, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. The one you are carrying is killing you. Two sets of people. One, those who are saying, man of God, as you are speaking, the Holy Spirit is telling me, I need Jesus. Not I need God. Not I need God. God is many things to many people. There is no other name given unto man by which men must be saved. God does not save men. There is a name. Jesus Jesus are we together this westernization that has made everything called God there are people God is a donkey there are people God is a tortoise there are people God is a small image somewhere looking like something but we are talking about Jesus the name that is above all names when he is lifted then he will draw all men to himself the second category of people who are coming out here are those who are saying man of God sincerely I've responded to an altar call but I cannot say my life is a reflection of the will of God I don't care about the house of God I don't care about the things of God my children should do anything if they want to do I do anything I want to do I watch anything I want to watch I do anything I want to do please let's save time I'm going to count one to five nobody's closing his eyes there are people in all the overflows scattered around 
as you hear my voice I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come right in front here and say man of God I need you to talk to me to, to, to pray for me one run like there's fire on the mountain if you are too big please go back two come and stand and passionately cry before God three passionately cry before God Lord I've come to you from the depth of my heart I can't keep playing games with you keep coming are you running leave your friend if he's trying to throw you back there's a spirit in him that will soon be casted out if your friend holds you back I assure you there is a spirit leave him and run and come don't say I came with my girlfriend I came with my boyfriend run to Jesus with all your heart keep clapping please motivate them as they're coming man of God it's as if you've been talking to me yes you are right you are the one I've been talking to and Jesus is calling you rush to him say Lord I'm tired I, I can't keep fighting this for long I got admission into APU and I became something else I, I became a graduate and I became something else I'm not ashamed I'm coming to you it is like an award ceremony you are not closing your eyes please run to Jesus the Lord is still telling me there are people in the day that you hear his voice do not harden your heart and stand before him and shame the devil over your destiny shame the devil over your destiny listen many of us standing here are young people one day you are going to be a father one day you are going to be a mother the father and the mother you hate right now that made you got into your lifestyle they had an opportunity when they were young they ignored Jesus but embraced education so they became graduates without Christ and they married without Christ although the wedding was done in the church and the disaster is the values of the kingdom are not reflected in our family the average young man seated here in the next five to ten years he will be married your conviction is what you are going to transfer to your home every stupid man today was a stupid young man correct he married and just wore suit on that stupidity and took it to his home we are sick and tired of a godless society a society that has no respect for God we, we are pushing God out and saying look look you know I'm, I'm too fine for all this this church thing no addiction is the trend addiction for God outspoken addiction listen I salute you ladies and gentlemen don't come out as if you are going to the graveyard nobody's morning it's a thing of joy I'm about to lead you to make the greatest decision in your life there are many of you years after now you will be leading others ladies you are standing here for the sake of your children one day they will look at you and say mommy thank you for giving your life to Jesus when you were 21 thank you for not joining this nonsense that is producing tears there's no magic about a great future you must run to Jesus like there's fire on the mountain and for those of us who are sitting down that you are sitting down doesn't mean you should not be here because there are people that are still supposed to be here but while you are seated you must say Lord make me serious with you an addiction for you an addiction for you an addiction for you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears yeah I'm not here to condemn you no no with all the love in my heart if I had my way I would hold every one of you because you have made a decision that will save a generation everyone who rejects Christ has implicated his generation because you can only give what you have those of you in front please lift your right hand seriously lift it high to the heavens and say after me Lord Jesus please say it from your heart say it again Lord Jesus don't worry you can cry it's alright Lord Jesus don't baby look at me look at me I love you there is a boy that disturbs you eh? send that boy a text and say Joshua Selman ask you to send him a text you never come near you again because you love God and God wants to use you hmm? 
you keep loving God and that boy keeps, I don't know who he is, drive him far from your life. Tell him I said so. In Jesus' name. Huh? So you pray that prayer. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. This night, I have heard your word and I come to you asking you to forgive me. Asking you to cleanse me. I believe I can be better than I am now. So I don't fight you again. Come into my heart. It belongs to you. Take everything that is mine and make it yours. Use me for your glory. Every condemnation, every guilt upon my life lives now and forever in Jesus name. Keep your hands lifted. I want to pray for you. Father, look at the ones you died for. They have come genuinely and openly to express before your people a commitment to love you and a commitment to live for you. Father, I pray that you honor their sincerity in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon your life and from today the appetite you used to have, you will no longer have it forever. I release grace upon you to drive some people from your life. And I release grace upon you to invite others into your life. I decree and declare that any association, I don't care how long they have been with you. And don't favor the cause of the kingdom. May today be your party with them forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision. Now please hold on. I want you to walk. The service is still on. Very quickly and you'll be back. Two instructions, please listen. One, you will follow that lady when I'm done talking. And we're going to have your details. Please make sure you give your accurate details. Your name and your number and whatever information. We need it because it will help us to be able to follow you up. Number two, and please let this be an announcement to the whole house. As a general rule, every time you are born again, the moment you are born again, automatically, you are a member of the prayer department for one month. Automatically. Are we together? When you are born again, so that for those of us who brought them now, if any of your loved ones is among the people, you encourage them. Automatically, for the next one month, you are a member of the prayer department. It's a model we have used from the onset of this ministry. When people get born again, the next thing is to give them an opportunity to have a kingdom community. Once they have a community of like-minded people that love God, they will have the strength to be able to shake off the things that are limitations. But if you leave them alone, sooner or later, the pressure will be too much on them and they will go back. Are we together now? So please, the prayer department, 4 to 6 at Rema Chapel. Rema Chapel is just across. For those of you who are not domiciled in Zaria, no problem. When you get your various ministries or places, you can always connect with living churches around and then be part of the prayer team at least for a month. It will build your spirit, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and then you begin to walk understand spiritual things and then from there your growth continues the lord bless you in the name of jesus please go ahead and follow the lady please you should create multiple points for them appreciate them everyone if i told you receive your job you will clap with all your heart keep clapping till they go Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, those coordinating them, coordinate them very fast. There should be multiple systems so that you coordinate them very fast and then they'll be back to come and catch up with the service. There are quite a number of them, so please, if they need some hands, we should have a few people assist them very quickly. Number two, the second reason why people continue a life of hardship and misery. Second reason, quickly, number two. Is ignorance and disobedience to God's principles ignorance and disobedience to God's principles will be very fast please 
just five minutes let's wrap this up very quickly so that we can begin to pray ignorance and disobedience to god's principles ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 he says the labor of the fool wearied every one of them because he does not know the road to the city not because there is no road he does not know it ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 ignorance and disobedience to god's principles write one more scripture ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 we may not have time just write them you can go and read them during your personal time with god ignorance and disobedience to god's principles look up please you know that one of the mandates that god has given us as a ministry is to teach men the principles of the kingdom i am i am obsessed and passionate about helping believers understand the systems in the kingdom and how to walk through those systems and experience victory in their lives so ignorance and disobedience is very costly number three please quickly number three the third reason why people go through perpetual hardship hardship in their life is demonic oppression the reality of demonic oppression write it down ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 the reality of demonic oppression demonic forces are real the activity of the dark world is real the bible did not leave us in confusion as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness first john chapter 5 verse 19 first john chapter 5 verse 19 he says we are of god and the whole world lieth in wickedness the condition to experience the the fierce wickedness in this world is that you are born you know um hold on there is there is a popular adage or cliche that people have all around the moment there is any kind of demonic intrusion they say who did i offend you've had that statement who did i offend though i didn't offend it. i left the village peacefully look he said in iniquity did my mother conceive you know the meaning of that i was never given an opportunity to choose whether i want the devil to oppress me or not the moment you are born that reality implicates you at once do not ever trivialize the fact that the dark world is still at work in our days at work does not mean in dominion at work means there is a consistent attempt by the forces of darkness to if allowed jeopardize every part of your christian life and every part of your christian experience finances family career education spiritual life every area satan will not leave any stone unturned to see that it destroys you john 10 10 says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he said but i am come that ye may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. Paul himself speaking. He says, once and again I desire to come unto you, but Satan hindered us. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. But Satan hindered us. Satan can hinder men. That's why God puts a miracle service like this. To come and break down that that system that he has built over the lives of people i gave us an admonition earlier on while speaking and i want to repeat it never consult mediums the occult and so on and so forth for help no never consult mediums listen the occult the dark world all kinds of extraterrestrial astral transcendental activities in an attempt to receive help jesus said i am the door every other person who comes came through the window i am the door i am the door when you come in through the door you are safe you come in through the window there are side effects two scriptures oh, i wish it could be projected but i'm sorry i'm sorry about the whole um, Leviticus chapter 20 verse 6. 
Leviticus chapter 20 verse 6. To play the harlot after them. I will even set my face against that soul. And I will cut him from off among his people. People who consult what? Familiar spirits. People who consult mediums. Occultic activities. Right? Many of them parading as different things. You go to your village. You enter one room. They say sit down. We want to do something for you. Incisions all around for protection. Say, eat this razor blade. Anybody that touches you, that razor blade will strike you. Demonic activities. They concoct one kind of drink and they tell you, take it. And recite all kinds of things. The Bible says, whoever does that, I personally, I will set my face against it. Ah, but apostle, I've done it already. You are welcome to the miracle service. That's why you will be delivered. That's why you will be sent for from all of that to wives who put their husbands in bottles for correct behavior to husbands who put their wives all kinds of, of things people have people have arrows in their ha homes and, and, and weapons that are, are demonic with, with charms let's be sincere things you hide under your carpet you are just sitting down you see strange men enter your house to slaughter all kinds of animals they wake you in the middle of the night all that consult mediums. All that consult mediums. Some persons may be listening to me online. Let, let me tell you, when God convicts you, adjust. Some of us are sincere, but our families, especially those of us who are coming from other faiths into the Christian life, or automatically you need to be prayed for. Automatically. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 and 11. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Quickly, please. We we'll trust God for a very quick walk tonight. Thank God by His grace we've made the altar call. Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 and 11. If you are not there, just listen. There shall not be found among you anyone who maketh his son, parents, listen, or daughter, pass through the fire or who use it divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer Zarya's um, city where are we or a consultor of mediums listen I'm listening to them or a wizard or a necromancer next verse says for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord men pass through strange fires necromancy transcendental meditation astral travels all kinds of extraterrestrial demonic activities the Bible warns this is Africa and I understand I'm not an American speaking I've told you my story don't think that I was born out of a Bible my God there is almost no family here that is innocent Tra just trace it just one generation after you someone worshipped something somewhere or didn't receive Christ and was serious so it's still the same thing somebody was involved somewhere and many people have been victims of those kinds of things hallelujah Demonic powers are real. Their agenda to stop the purposes of God over your life are real. But one thing the Bible says is that the light shines in the darkness. Hallelujah. And it says the darkness cannot comprehend. That's why I know that every force that has held anyone's life today, in the name of the Son of the living God, it must give way. The last reason why do people remain 
under the yoke, the fierce yoke of oppression. The last reason, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. The last reason I'll give tonight, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. Yes, we are social beings, but brothers and sisters, we are also spiritual beings. Every man must be empowered. Jesus himself told them, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Tarry, tarry. Don't be in a rush. Tarry until you have an evidence that can keep darkness away. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. 6 verse 10, Ephesians. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Finally, brethren, finally, koinonia, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day, right? That the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke shall be taken away from your neck. And the burden shall be destroyed because this is the singular reason why burdens are destroyed because of the anointing. Because of the anointing, do not reject empowerment. Listen, empowerment is not for men of God. Are we together? Empowerment is not for those doing church and ministry and evangelism. Empowerment is not for leaders. Empowerment is for every believer. Every believer. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is your basis for establishment. You cannot live in today's wicked world without empowerment. Apostle Joshua Selman does not guarantee to be there for you every time you need him. But there is an anointing you can receive from the Holy Spirit. Standing in partnership with the Lord will raise a standard against him. I believe in running to men of God to help you and pray for you. But there is no man of God that gives you guarantee of 100% attention. It's impossible. There are times you can call me and I'm sleeping. Why? Because I'm human. But there is a keeper of Israel who neither sleeps nor slumbers. And the Bible says that he's willing. That outpouring of power. Part of the things you must trust God for tonight is an empowerment. An empowerment against fear. An empowerment against all kinds of oppressions of darkness. Fear. Right? Perfect love. Cast out fear. For fear hath torment. There are many of us who need empowerment. You are afraid. Just to go from here to Kaduna, you are praying in tongues all through the car. Not praying in tongues of faith. Just fear. You want to nod your head and rest a little. The driver just might say, Driver, be careful, oh, please. Fear. Fear makes us suspect everyone. You come to someone's house, they put food and you look at it. I say, no, they, they put spoon here. Why is this person? This person wants to kill me. Fear. You need an empowerment. If you don't say, I, I'm old. Don't be afraid. You are now a man. No, there's no such thing as a man. A man means you have an anointing. Hello? A man means you have what? No matter how old you are. Gentlemen, listen to me. If this thing is not on you, you are not yet a man. Because gone are the days where you fight with horses and chariots. Someone stands and speaks. And a wicked arrow lands upon your life with all your energy and physical stature. Makes rubbish and nonsense out of you. The woman who makes incantation, you can beat her physically. But she will call you from Italy to come and die in your village. Men are men who have power. Power with God. Power with God. Power with God. They invoke a charm against you before they finish their death. That's the registration to me that not every word is fake. Come on now. They bring your picture as they as they show it. The fire they are trying to invoke comes out from the picture and burns the face of every devil to ashes. And you are not praying. It's not like you are praying at home. Maybe you are even cheating. What is working? My head. My head, my, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The anointing is a powerful mystery. 
It's a mystery till we get to heaven we will understand. The anointing is not falling down and shaking. The anointing is not people moving around. Those are just effects. Boy, the anointing is a force. A force that works. You speak with the anointing, you get results. You speak because you are shouting, you have something. You make bold claims without the anointing, they visit you in the night. You make bold claims with the anointing, whether day or night, you are still in control. How terrible art thou in thy ways? Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. In the name of Jesus from tonight, some of you, as you are going back home, you are not even saying anything as you are going back to your house. It's an announcement to the spiritual climate of your territory. You are saying no more. No more. No more. Nobody passes with all this wicked spirit and then it lands on you. No. I'm not, I'm not a dumping ground. They don't cast a demon from a crusade ground and it's moving through arid regions and just sees me and lands on. Don't think I'm joking. Demons still find men. You come out fine. And return back with a fierce spirit on you. And find out that you are suddenly getting angry. You were not like that. You are an angry person. You could never insult your husband. But something comes and says, Everybody is a human being. No, a stranger has found entrance into your life. Ah, I'm born again. No demon can live in me. Please keep quiet. You are a spirit. You live in a body. Connecting your spirit and your body is a soul. Very big space for any amount of demons to stay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Please take it serious. There are some habits people, you cannot use resolution to stop. Oh man of God, I love God, but I just sit down and once I'm on my laptop, the next thing I'm watching, I can't help it. No, 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 no. It's not about trying to help it. There is an anointing that must stand up on your life in heaven because it's a spirit. Fill me up. I instruction the Lord gave me that at the point this oil touches the head of everyone then we begin to speak 
dramatic miracles, dramatic deliverances. Bring them out, lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of the living God, everyone online and here by the mystery of this oil, any stranger, Kabataya, any covenant, every wicked spirit manipulating the destiny of anyone, I decree and declare right now by the fire of the spirit let there be deliverance right now inside and outside yokes inside and outside i stand upon this oil i stand upon this place i decree and declare anyone under any demonic manipulation Right now in the name of Jesus, I command the spirits, I command the devils, off you go from their lives now, off you go from their lives now, bring them out. Lift your hands. At the count of three you will shout Jesus. My God, I see massive deliverance outside massive deliverance outside freedom for people and families at the count of three that's all i want you to do thank you jesus let there be complete deliverance one two shout it now three jokes be destroyed jokes be destroyed every spirit Every force, every spirit, every force, every spirit, every force, every spirit. Lift your hands. The spirits that cause failure, that everything you do, you don't succeed. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command them to leave you now. Leave you now. Leave you now. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. Lift your hands. My God. I want to pray for students because I'm seen like a blue flame. There is a spirit that which haunts the academics of students. You are a student here, get ready. Liberty comes to you at the count of three. One, two, three. Leave them right now. Leave them right now. They are academics. Oh, they have not been able to pass job. They have not been able to graduate. I command that spirit. You must go now. You must go now. You must go now. Lift your hands. I don't know what force of darkness is responsible for bad luck in the lives of men. Simple things that should work out, never work out. Now in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, whoever is a victim of that oppression, as I speak now, let the fire of the Holy Ghost land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Help them please. Bad luck. Your hands. I tell you, there are so many miracles happening. Listen, listen. I want to pray 
I want to pray for men and women inside and outside. Listen to me. Do you know hardship is a cause? Hardship is more than poverty. Poverty is absence of money. Hardship is a hard life. No matter how high you rise, your life becomes hard. Lift your hands and pray for families, not just individuals. So the power of God will come upon you for your family. I'm standing here and the Lord is asking me to face the minister's seat and stretch my hands. Every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, I command freedom. I command freedom. Now I turn to the congregation. At the count of three, shout Jesus and that devil must leave your family. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Help that lady. Go, 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 go. Hardship. 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 I command you. In the name of Jesus, I command you. You must go. I command you. You must go. You are a spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Who is Veronica? Veronica. Veronica. Just leave them. We are praying. All those under the anointing, I set you free now. I command those devils, leave them forever. Leave their families forever. Strangers, go right now. The Bible says they will run when they hear his voice out of their hiding place. Therefore, I command every stranger in anyone's life and destiny. It's time for you to live and never return. Veronica, you are Veronica. Where are your parents? I'm seeing a light. Is your mother here? She's in Saria. She's in Saria. That's what I mean. Right here. Go and tell your family that God is bringing a major breakthrough. I'm seeing crying all over. But I'm prophesying to you that a, a breakthrough, a new chapter opens for the family in the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen. I'm just going to speak to a few people. But before I pray, I want you to check yourself. There are people you will check yourself and the pain is gone. You check yourself and there is a miracle. Run where you are. Don't sit down. The moment you find out there's a miracle, run. Pastor Jimmy will be here. Immediately run. We'll just take a few testimonies and then I'll minister healing very quickly. We have to be fast. Our time is gone. Who are these people? You are all Veronica. Look at me. There's witchcraft in your family. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Don't let it go right now. Over her and her family, I cause witchcraft completely in the name of Jesus Christ. Is your sister here? Where is she? Sister, are you here? Quickly, please come. Come and hold her hands. I see a fight for the destiny of the people in this family, and God wants to set you free now. I stretch my hands. You are holding your hands. Representing the family. I break every altar. Responsible for hardship and pain in your family. And I declare right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That as my hand comes on both of you. Let there be the beginning of strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus. God is giving people miracles. Are you giving Jesus praise? Come on Koinonia. Make sure they confirm you and check you. God is touching people. Touching people. There is a lady. There is a lady you came here. Since 29th December. You have been bleeding non-stop. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Hallelujah. We are going to do two things concurrently. Your prayer request. Did you come with them? Or you forgot? Please bring them out. Always come with your prayer request when you come for the miracle service. Now, ushers, quickly, please collect the prayer request. If you are trusting God for a healing miracle, please, now is the time. Quickly, come out here very quickly. 
Come out here very quickly. Those outside, hold on. Those outside, if you are in the overflow and you are yet to come in. If you have come in, it's okay, you can come. But if you are yet to come, those in the overflow, the first overflow, just walk outside. Stand in front, outside at the projector. Those, the overflow at the roadside, just stand right there um, so that we can, we can make it fast. Those inside and those who have entered, come to the front quickly. Trusting God for a healing miracle. Pass your request to the ushers. If there are ushers here or protocol, please collect quickly. And then you can come quickly. Please, educate. Okay. Pastor Ejimi will be outside. He will be outside with um, Shade. Come, stand up. Oh, stand up. This pastor's wife will have to start walking. Now, stand up. In the name of Jesus Christ, please. Three of you will go outside. In the name of Jesus, you will lay hands. Please come. I'll lay my hands on you. Let me lay my hands on them. It's a very good thing to expose them. Father, please anoint them. As they lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus. As they lay hands on the sick, let your healing power flow through them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So please, you go outside the gym. You can meet them. They can go outside here. And then, in the name of Jesus Christ. As they lay hands on you, please, if they don't ask you anything, don't worry. Just receive by faith. You don't have to start explaining. Our time is gone. Then, right here, Pastor Alpha, Pastor Femi, uh, Benga, Okay, promise you can also go. Mike, join them. Um, okay, no, no, no. Let's not do it that way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Will be enough. Okay, Mike, you can. Or Pastor Alpha, you can stay. Um, Pastor Femi, Benga, Mike, and promise you can go outside. They'll, they'll, you just position yourself and then you minister to them very quickly. And then, Pastor Fa, you can join me and then we we'll do it in the worship team. You will help us. Please collect the request very quickly. Let's be very fast about it in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm praying a prayer now. Everyone, please participate and say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that everyone sick here is declared free right now. And as hands are laid on you, let there be supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. At Calvary. At Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is very Burdens are lifted at Calvary. At Calvary. At Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Over now. Jesus now. is now.
Aaron is here. Just, just indicate and then you'll drop it. Please. Don't disorganize the line so that we can hurry up. Because by the time you go back, they will have collected.
stretch your hands on this request. Stretch your hands on this request. We are going to pray on them right now. Please stretch your hands on this request. In the name of Jesus, there is a God that answers prayers. If you are outside, don't worry. You are still on the healing line. It's still pray for you. But for time's sake, let's stretch our hands in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to declare that every request, please make sure we have all the requests. The request, yes. Every request is turned into a testimony. Go ahead and begin to declare it. This is our year of triumph. In this year of triumph, we declare and declare. We declare and declare. Supernatural miracles. Are you praying? Are you praying? I say it again, between now and miracle service February, return with dear some testimonies. Every impossible situation represented here as touching your life, your finances, your health, your family, may the God of heaven turn it into a testimony. Anyone who must be cleared on the way for this testimony to come to pass, we clear them from the way. Anyone who must appear for this request to be testimonies, we command them to appear. Anything that must change for this to be called a testimony, we command it to change. In the name of Jesus. Father, we trust you. We have presented this before you. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pick it back as testimonies. In the name of Jesus, you will do this and you will glorify yourself. In the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hands and pray for you now. I pray in the name of Jesus and I pray for your life. Hard life, the life of hardship. I command it to end now from your life. I command it to end now from your family. I command it to end now from your life. To end from your family. The kind of opportunity you have never seen in the name of Jesus. Some of you, beginning from tomorrow, you will begin to see it. Believe what I'm saying. You will begin to see it in the name of Jesus. I don't know what a current event happens in your life. While you think you have escaped it, it happens again. I'm prophesying to you. It comes to an end right now. In this year of triumph, it comes to an end right now. It comes to an end right now. Please stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak favor to your life. In the name of Jesus, 
the God who by grace has favored this ministry in an unbelievable dimension I pray may the favor that God has put upon this ministry I transfer it strangely to your life receive it receive it receive it receive it right now it begins to help her please my God receive it right now I release that favor strength favor strength favor strength favor strength favor men helping you strength favor women helping you believe it strength favor enemies helping you critics helping you mysteriously I decree and declare whatever has refused to work in your life you try it is working for others you see it working for others but when it's your turn it does not work I command it to begin to work now I command it to begin to work now ladies I pray for you I don't know what has covered your glory you are great, you are virtuous, but glory covered. I declare that from this miracle service, an unfailing of your glory, an unfailing of your glory. I want to pray for everybody, but specifically for our brothers. One of the blessings of this year is that God will bless your hands. If you don't believe it, just keep quiet. Don't criticize. Just keep quiet. But for as many who are trusting God, that God will establish you as a man, I prophesy to you, receive that unction. Receive that unction. The unction that establishes men to be able to take care of their homes, to be ready to be a man in deed. Ta, 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 ta. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Lift your hands and see pray. Some of us are victims of foolishness. Therefore, I pray for you. The spirit of wisdom, be baptized with it right now. Be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. I don't know what you have lost, but this is January. God has declared that it's a year of trouble. Therefore, I command, between now and next miracle service, receive double restoration. Double restoration. Double restoration. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you for speed. See, let me tell you something. When speed comes into your life, when speed comes into your life, you will be surprised that within a short time, you will catch up and do a lot of things. I prophesy to you. Where they have overtaken you, something comes on your life this night. Run like Elijah. Pursue. Pursue. Overtake. Recover all. Without fail, I prophesy. Pursue. Overtake. Recover all. Two more prophecies and we are done. I don't know what distracted you from loving God. You were not like that. Your prayer life was a priority. Your word life was a priority. But something feared you off. I pray fresh impartation of hunger for God and the things of God take it now take it now fresh hunger fresh fire fresh hunger prayer fire word fire fasting fire prayer fire word fire fasting fire receive it in the name of Jesus I break the cause of spiritual laziness. Laziness to wake up and pray. Laziness to fast. Laziness to study. I break it from your life in the name of Jesus. 
And I pray for you. Last prayer point. Some of you have been obeying God in the secret. But the result has refused to manifest. According to the word. When you do things in secret. God rewards you openly. Is that not what the Bible says? I want to prophesy to you. I don't know who shut the door. I'm praying oh, And this is from my spirit. I know you have been tightened. But there's, we have not seen the evidence. I know my God has helped you. I pray for you. And open testimony. Open proofs. Open results. Receive it right now. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Anyone on your job here and you are having cases with your superiors, I'm praying for you now. Beginning from Monday, I change their hearts towards you. Whenever they are looking for men to promote, may you be the one for the recommendation. And anyone here called jobless, who is interested in a job or your loved ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't care whether you apply or not, may the God of heaven orchestrate favor to your life. Every businessman here, every businesswoman, I command it to work for you. Help them. I command it. Ah, no, no, no. I have that anointing. Oh, that one God gave me. I release it for you. Let it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. Access to men you do not know. Access to their resources. Access to favor from them. As you sleep in the night, may the God that I serve show you secrets in your dream. That you will wake up jumping and smiling. You will wake up rejoicing in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The honor that God has placed by grace upon this house. I pray you are part of what God is doing and there's no reason why you should not partake of it. You have honored me you have honored God. I compel that anyone that looks at your eyes, except you don't have eyes, but that they can look at your eyes. I compel favor from them to you. The Bible says Esther obtained favor from anyone who saw her. Not talk to her. They just see you and rise up to help you. May the God that I serve make it happen for you. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.